Um, I'm, I'm going to just do this for an overlay because I feel like it's extra topical today, but pronoun check, everyone? Yeah, we should. Oh, we yeah. should. We'll, we'll, I was, I was going to potentially do that as we as we go through. So, yeah, why, why don't we go ahead and do that now? Um, I'll, I'm he, him. Happy with those? Him. I just see him. Sweet. I'm on that, uh, I'm on that, that good, good, they, them. And uh, he, him is also chill. But for, for this, they is perfect. Awesome. Sweet. And for you yourself? And I'm any. Yeah. Yay. Mm -hmm. Most indecisive of them all. <laughs> variety. Whatever no, the fuck. we call it variety. Well seasoned. <laughs> for you with no, the pronouns. It was seasoned. That's good. For you with my queen as the pronouns. <laughs> Your highness. Your highness. I like it. <laughs> my liege, actually. Ooh. Ooh that's, that's, that's that's good. That hits. That, that's fancy, although that has a little bit of the fedora energy, a little bit of the milady energy. Maybe I'm just old. Uh, I don't know. The lady. My lady. Uh, the lady. Oh, <laughs> whole goddamn briefcase of me. Oh no. Okay. Before we get too deep into it, let's get into it, guys. Welcome to another episode of the Group Up Podcast, and it is an awesome one indeed. We've got a new hero that everyone's trying. And as you could have told by the start of this discussion, that we've got a lot of interesting topics adjacent to the hero, as well as the awesome, fun gameplay to discuss today. So welcome for the Great Venture Debate. Let me introduce my guests who need no introducing. In the bottom right, not from Li Zhang Tower, once again, just a green background, is my man Samido. Samido, what's up? Oh, shoot, not much. Been grinding Venture. I, I'll try, I was trying to figure out how I could do Li Zhang. And I, can't, I can't get you guys and Li Zhang in the background at the same time. I don't think, unless I'm done, which is also a very high possibility. Um, but I, this is just how it's going to have to work. So you got my, my messy little bed on the right. I do have like three comforters and two blankets and like five pillows on there. I'm not ashamed of it, okay? I am pillow and blanket gang all the way. Um, and no snacks today, SVB. I've been uh, I've been getting back in the gym, playing basketball, and like getting back in shape. So the pistachios had to get put away this time. But oh, no. it's all it's been all. Nate put me onto these like little like protein, these strawberry flavored protein shakes, and they are fire. So I've been I'm not gonna lie, like I've been I've been down to those. I made one last night too with real strawberries. It was it was pretty good. It was, I I messed with it. It was good. It was good. I liked it. But we're here. We're here. Snackless Amido. I'm definitely a believer of, of you want your, your blankets even in the summer. You just get a fan going. You got to have something oh. covering your body. Oh, um, yeah, dude. 100%. 100%. Got to get that feeling like someone's hugging me because no one will for real. Um, in the <laughs> top left is my queen, like I said. Faria, Faria, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Yesterday I did my taxes and they were so depressing. But... The good thing is they're over and I don't have to think about money for another year. True. Yes. And and I'm also on the protein shake grind. Um like Sam, I I have been gosling the protein. It's it's been it's everything. It's it I bought so 160 servings of this mm. banana bread flavored um I I like to call it my meat smoothie because <laughs> it bothers <laughs> me. <laughs> now there's a nickname. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I have so much of it. It's all expired already because I got it on clearance, but I got <laughs> I got to finish my meat smoothie, no. man. <laughs> banana bread is goat. That's banana bread is such a good flavor. That and strawberry I'm on the money. I like This it. might explain yes. your, your health issues for you. This might explain why you fall ill. <laughs> Wait, let me show you. The the container is actually so big. Okay, okay. Well, I, I actually, I'm curious. I kind of want. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm invested in the lore now. <laughs> the, the lore. Story, we need. We need the story. Oh, it's huge! What the hell? Oh. That is a Costco size <laughs> if I've ever seen one. Oh my! Goodness. You got three of those? You said real, real base. Th three of those? Did you say you had? Yep. Wow. Valid. Yep. <laughs> well, that's that's Based. some real beefcake. Beefcake right there. All right, and let's round us off for the first appearance on the podcast. Bones. Bones, how are you doing? And would you like to introduce yourself for the listeners who are yeah. hopefully not unfamiliar with you? But go ahead. Hopefully, but they might be. Um, first and foremost, thank you very much for inviting me on for, for this very exciting episode. Um, my name is Bones. I'm from IRL Junkertown. Uh, I'm from Sydney, Australia. I go by they, them, and he, him pronouns. Um, and I'm fairly new on the Overwatch scene. I only started playing Overwatch when Overwatch 2 came out. So I'm fresh as a daisy. I am impressionable and uh, really excited to talk about everything uh, with you guys because you're all very seasoned and you all have your very informed opinions. And I'm really excited to like talk about the game from a perspective of somebody who's kind of like super casual and like 
does not play ranked ever. So that'll be fun. Well, that's perfect because every every time we do the podcast, somebody complains in the comment section that's like, where's the real player experience? <laughs> yeah. It's all you top 500 grinders like whining about your one percenter problems where's the real players well there you go guys we representation in every domain we have I'm your gold, normal baby. exactly <laughs> exactly we got a male rank player the average rank coming through speaking for the people uh, i'm the i'm the epitome of the average uh overwatch player probably not but we'll see it's true fabulous and gold that's that is pretty much the average overwatch player i think um uh. All right, well, let's get into it, guys. We have Venture. This is the Great Venture Debate. So on top of everything else, we're going to discuss our new hero and everything that comes with them. Uh, I think, I think as we always do, we'll just go with general thoughts first and foremost. General thoughts, guys. How are you feeling about A, Venture, and, and B, just the game at the moment? How is it treating you? So we'll go with Sam first. Sam, Venture, and the game. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. You know, like it's, I, I don't think I've seen so much of a turnaround from a franchise in one year, really. And, and I think even the media is starting to like catch on that too, in that you're starting to see the articles come out where people are like, yeah, this was, this was the right thing to do. Cause the PVE was, it was a dream, but the reality was like, you know, what the, the game that everybody loved was, was the PVP, right? And we, we all love that. Um, Venture is the first hero that's been for my role and I guess Freeha's role as well, technically in four years right the projectile dps character has not come out in four years really because the last one that came out was echo because sojourn she has projectiles in her jail, man. <laughs> i know I, I and i've loved echo so much fun she's so elegant she's got the highest skill ceiling for dps in the game and like i she's she's a beautiful character with a beautiful gameplay loop right venture is like i i feel like i have dps doom back svb without one shotting everybody and pissing them off you know it's it's like <laughs> Because I can, I can make the plays. I can angle my first game. I went crazy, and I, I will say, like she, or they, fuck, I'm gonna mess this up so bad. I'm so sorry. I'm not an asshole. I'm just an idiot. That's what I had to tell my chat today. They, um, they, they they're a little underkitted in terms of like DPS Doom, for example, had three CDs, right? Um, where the uppercut was in the middle, but you had a choice of how you needed to engage, like in the fight. Venture's the same, right? Except there's only two CDs, and so you have to be super flexible with using your drill ability. What is that ability called? Ability two, the right click. Um, yeah, I actually don't um, know. Drill dash? Drill dash, something like that, right? Um, where you get a shorter cooldown on it if you use it underground. And you can do like a little, like almost a horseshoe with the ability while you're underground trying to boot people and bait them. And then drill, it's, it's, a, it's hard, but... It's big. It's a big brain character, and that's why I like it so much for 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 spacing, for whatever it may be. I, I think they nailed the design. It might need some tweaks. The ult's very very strong, really really fun. It, it's you know it's nice seeing characters come out that appeal to the brain side of the game instead of the aim side of the game. Not that they shouldn't do that for the aim side of the game, but it's just been so long since you know a character that does everything like Echo has come out. For my role in particular, because I, I, you know, I could play support, I could play tank too, but I'm a projectile DPS player. Okay? That's <laughs> that's that's you know, I that that's that's what I was, I, that's what I do, and you know, it's nice to have a character that has great skill expression. It's very quirky in game. Venture's kind of the perfect video game character from what I've seen in game, from the voice lines to it's it's almost like the character has an ecstatic personality. And I like that because I'm kind of a goofball too. So, you know, I'm going to be goofing off on Venture <laughs> all the time. Uh, but they nailed it. And I, I, I'll say this about the state of the game. You know, this is the best year turnaround I think I've seen in a franchise in a long time. It turns out when, you know, we're not having Call of Duty model ram down Team 4's throat, you know, and it's it's pretty apparent at this point what that was. It, they took all my Warzone guns away too in cosmetics and made a new game. And it's like, all oh, right, well, right. you get say, you gonna get back on Reaper Time? No, I'm, I'm not because you took my guns away. So, you know, I'm, 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 you know. <laughs> I'm just great winding job. you great. back. I'm happy. I'm winding you back a little bit, Sam. You got so much to talk about. I can see the energy, but uh, we've got loads, all those points we'll elaborate on, right? So I'm gonna give you all your moment to get through all of them. I wanna head over to Fariha next. Fariha, just general thoughts on Venture and the game as it stands. I love them so much. Okay, so uh, as for the wider uh, scope of the game, I completely agree with what Sam just said just now about how a franchise has completely turned around the public perception 
um, I, I don't think I've ever seen it done to this degree. And I think it's really, really impressive because the ship that they had to write was fucking monumental. It's like they had to unsink the Titanic. And by God, they're doing it, right? Like, I don't think that the... I can't find the words to describe how optimistic I feel by the fact that they're so quick to do these hot fixes and these balance patches and everything. And season nine has just felt good. Even when it's felt bad, the badness has not lasted very, very long. Like, remember when Mauga got that buff? Thank fuck. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank frick that they, um, they walked that back. But it just goes to show, right? They're willing to change things. They're willing to iterate faster and these cycles being quicker is so so nice and it speaks to a really really good direction that i'm excited to see and and in terms of venture i just i fucking love them they they have this energy about them that you don't really see in any of the other overwatch characters maybe tracer comes the closest but it's this joie de vivre that uh none of the others have right of just this excitement and this curiosity to live more life and experience the good it has to offer and it just it's it's really endearing and I love that they're so cute and um, and also I love the representation front too but we'll get into that later. Hello guys, SCB here and the Goop Up podcast is back and I'd like to take just 30 seconds of your time to talk to you about two quick things. Firstly, Patreon. If you enjoy the content, then please do consider supporting directly because Patreon takes only about 10% of the money you give where YouTube and Twitch take 40 and 50% respectively. So if you'd like to support the podcast then that is the best way to do so. Secondly, if you're someone who enjoys video essays or detailed analysis of movies, TV, or anime, then please do check out my second channel, The Soak, where I'll be making videos about those kind of topics much more frequently and where a lot of my attention will go beyond just Overwatch. It would mean the absolute world to me if you guys would check it out. But that's it for now. Let's head back to the discussion. Absolutely, we will. But yeah, there's definitely like a... They've got like a real... Like, just likable, just very personable energy that Venture has, I think. It's just like there's something about them that's very easy to appreciate and something that feels very modern. Something I think a lot of, like, you know, our internet generation and Zoomers can relate to, where it's just like very hyper energy but also kind of silly and willing to laugh at themselves like it, there's a, there's a lot going on there and we'll we'll get right into it i'm gonna take it to bones next bones obviously these guys talking about the wider state of the game and turning the ship yeah. around and we'll I, in fact we'll, we'll let's I'll, I'll ask your general thoughts but i also want to lead this to the next section as well which is that how do you feel about the game as someone who only joined during Overwatch watch 2 you don't have the same association we do where we had like this love from from beforehand and you don't have necessarily the baggage that you've seen the game go from being this really hype game to being a really shit on game and now maybe better. How do you view Overwatch and, and how did you view Overwatch when you started to play it and how are you feeling about the game right now? So my experience with Overwatch when um, it originally came out, I was big on the Team Fortress 2 front. I was very much, uh, I wanted to play that kind of game. It was very manic, it was very energetic, it was all over the place, the characters weren't too serious. So when Overwatch, uh, the original came out, I was just like, oh, you guys made, uh, you made Team Fortress 2, but you made it like anime. And that was, that was my thought. That is very silly. I was young and I have a lot more experience in the gaming space now. Um, but like I said, like I wasn't involved in Overwatch 1 at all. Um, and so when Overwatch 2 came out, I was just like, you know what? I'm actually, I'm going to jump on this. I've seen the characters around for so long. And I think that was the easiest part of the game to fall in love with for me, like as an outsider. I just fell in love with characters. I knew nothing about the game. I knew, like, I didn't know how it played and I didn't care to know it at the beginning. And so I fell in love with the characters and I'm like, all right, I'm going to start playing Overwatch 2. And so from my perspective of somebody who's only been in the game for a short amount of time, like you said, it's it's a real experience in that I haven't seen this game fall from grace as, as some people might have. Um, and so it has been an interesting thing to navigate um, as a new player, listening to folks like yourselves who are very seasoned, who know what they're speaking about when it comes to like balances and the way that the game has changed over time. It's been interesting to look at that because I don't necessarily feel it at the level that I play at, which is very casual. It's 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 all around things like quick play, um, just goofing off with my friends on stream and things like that. Um, and so I don't know if I feel the pains the same way that a lot of the player base who's been in the game for a long time have. Um, and I think it's, it can be like disheartening to kind of see the way that the game is talked about, especially in online spaces, like places like, you know, Twitter can be really savage and like YouTube comments and things like that. 
Um, and so it, it can be this moment where you're just like, man, I don't know why this game gets shit on so hard. Like, it seems really good. Like, it plays really well from my perspective. Um, but with the... Um, in regards to like the uh, the latest update with Venture and a lot of things like Freeha mentioned like hotfixes and stuff like that, I have um, been observing that from, you know, only a short amount of time, but I appreciate the way that this game seems to be like it evolves with the community. So a lot of the time when we have things, spaces like the podcast and like community spaces on like YouTube and Twitch and things like that, the more that creators like yourselves like talk about the game, the more it influences changes within it. And I think that as a fresh player is really nice to see. Like it is not a game that is like, it's not stagnant. It is very much uh, the team listen and they react to things. And they also take into consideration things that we like, things that we don't like. And then that then influences uh, the things that they bring out in the future. So uh, too long, didn't read. Uh, I'm real base level and don't fully know what's going on, but I appreciate things like communication and the way that the community talks about everything. So that makes it feel very, I feel very involved, even though I'm just, I'm just a kid running around, you know, playing venture, eating rocks, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, definitely don't worry about too long. In fact, I, I'm, I'm going to probe you a little more because I'd love to hear more of your opinion on this. It's, it's, it's very rare that we really get to talk to someone yeah. who doesn't have such a like a clouded history with Overwatch or such like a biased history right. with Overwatch. Um, hmm. So you don't no worry about going too long. Yeah. yeah, don't worry about going too long. I'll, I'll interrupt you like I did, Sam, if I feel like it's going to... Right. If it's going on too long. But I'd love to hear your take on how you view, like just the, the development team handling Overwatch. Like how do you view them, how they've done since you've been playing Overwatch? You feel like they, you, you kind of alluded to that you feel like they are actually very responsive. And do you think that yeah. they've made mostly good steps or, or they've made bad steps? Like how do you view it? I I was so I was really excited for the um the PVE missions like that was something that I was really into because like I said when I started like participating um in the game space for Overwatch it was very much a perspective of I really liked the characters and I really liked the stories that they had to tell and I thought that you know PVE was going to be that moment for a lot of us like in the same space as me where it was just like we get to see characters interacting differently we get to see the relationships that they build and that like to me as a casual enjoyer very much uh, fulfills my uh, needs from a game is that do I have stories that I can take away from this game and then like go and you know participate in spaces like the fandom space so like fanfic writers and like fan artists and things like that that's like my favorite part of Overwatch um, and so I feel like when that kind of obviously fell by the wayside for obvious reasons um, it was that was like devastating but I can understand when when they have to make hard choices like that to kind of realize that, okay, we, you know, can't necessarily do this given the parameters, whatever that might be. Um, but from a perspective of like gameplay, I, you know, again, I couldn't tell you ultimately if the steps that they take are good or bad. I can only tell you that it just sometimes feels different. Like, um, for example, uh, the most recent change to things like the DPS passive. Um, I play a lot of support, and so I sort of felt the knock-on effect of that uh, a little bit, but not to the degree of people who play in a comp setting, I, I suspect. It's kind of like, I don't know, I look at the changes and I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense, I guess. And I guess I have nothing to compare it to, is the, is the biggest thing for me. Um, and maybe that keeps me in a better space for Overwatch where I don't ever have to be like, oh, but this character used to be like this once upon a time. I don't have that comparison to hold it to a different standard. Um, and so I think with everything that's been changing in Overwatch, I can see like the improvements definitely. Um, but again, like I can't speak to what it used to be. And I think that is maybe a good thing. I think that maybe it's a positive thing that I haven't had to go through the ebbs and flows of the way that the game has changed over the years. So, 
I, I think it's a super yeah. good thing. I think I think if the devs could, they would probably wipe everyone's memory, Men in Black style, and just be like, everybody yeah. start afresh. Because I think that would help Overwatch yeah. a lot if we yeah. could all have a quote-unquote yeah. objective POV on it, which <laughs> we just, yeah, there you go. You Forget, forget what you've been through. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, Sam, you, you, someone who also was, you know, you always tell me when you're like, what got you to Overwatch was the was the Dragons short, right? The animated short. <gasps> yeah. How do you, how do you feel about what what Bones just said there? And I, I, I think for me, it confirms a lot of what I anecdotally felt was true of like people who are new to Overwatch and what the casual appeal for Watch is. But how do you feel about what's been discussed there? All the same way. I mean, it's it's when you look at when you look at a lot of people's stories about what brought them into the game you know it's there, there's never been an fps and and this stands true to this day and it really it really tell it really does you have to give blizzard their flowers here in that there's been a ton of shooters that have come out and everybody's like this is the overwatch killer this is the one this is the one and then it's like gungdom evolution with no no offense to, to, to that game but you know the graphics don't compare the characters like identities don't compare right like blizzard just does such a fantastic job of bringing a world to life in a way that no one no one no one else has done right and the feeling you get in the overwatch engine is unrivaled and it, to this day it's been even from the old one to the new one right it's been uh, uh seven years eight eight years coming up or seven 25th 26 eight, eight eight is coming up eight is coming up oh. <laughs> think about how long a time frame that is though that's really impressive right and and so you know it's it's the stories they tell how immersive the characters are like i you, i don't have to preach this anymore you know i was looking forward to the pbe so much right i, I love I, i'm not gonna get started on borderlands i'm not gonna get started on it because borderlands 4 in development by the way you know we'll see uh but yeah I, it's just on the money and it's it's re just really interesting and i love having fresh thoughts on the podcast because it's, it's a new brain to pick if you will to hear new perspectives and ideas and why wouldn't you want to learn from more perspectives in life or you're not doing your a service to yourself or really the human species in general if you're not out there trying to learn about new stuff and, and, and day in day out get broaden your horizons get new perspectives it, it's just it's cool to see the same story transpire throughout time about what gets people into the game and that just know that just tells you they're doing it right Bria, you know this as well you're you're a lover of the lore and you you love all the <laughs> vibrancy of the characters i mean I think it just sells again, doesn't it? That we we just need to do more with it, isn't it? It, it is what the beauty of what brings so many people to Overwatch. This game has ruined other FPSs for me. I can't, <laughs> I can't go back to TF2. I can't play Apex because I have played for the past seven years the game with literally the best audio engine in the entire world. Like I, I, I cannot. Like I can't go back to audio issues in Apex. I can't like. <laughs> It is so, it's so, so impressive that it's held this space in the public sphere. And yeah, I just, I, I hope we get more lore stuff. I hope we get more of the, the, the things that made us fall in love with it in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I would I'd love for your opinion on kind of the things that Bones alluded to there with, you know, like the PVE being canceled and looking forward to the PVE and that, that kind of community of the game, like where, before we get to talking about the gameplay at the moment adventure, like where do you view the place for that community right now, like the, the people who are primarily lore passionate. I feel like we have something to mourn and I, I hope that we can find the spaces and the words to do so. But I think that it is a consequence of capitalism that the PVE has kind of been lost to time because I think that the devs who worked on it, everybody who had a hand in it, I think that when you're a game developer, when you're any sort of artist, you want as many people as possible to see your work. You don't want to put it behind a giant paywall. You want people to enjoy it because that's why you made it, right? To connect with people, to bring them fun, to tell these stories. And so I really, really think that if it were up to the devs, like we would be playing PvE right now. But unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. Unfortunately, they're beholden to the shareholders, to whatever executives are twisting and meddling their their actions. And so I think that, yes, this is something we have to mourn. It's it's deeply sad, but also this is a consequence of the terrible systems in the world we live in right now. Yeah, no, not, anyone, not anyone. Not an individual fault. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. And anyone who's kind of followed the gaming space recently is what I was going to add to that is that you will have seen game development just in a really rough place, like just layoffs, 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 mergers, 
acquisitions, takeovers, like oh, constantly it feels like the turnaround for developers right now is so high. The job insecurity is so high. And obviously we've seen the entire PV team be laid off. And that's, yeah, as you said, it's, it's a structural issue, right? I think a lot of times people can come away with this feeling that like my game is uniquely bad and my game's developers are uniquely bad, the game that I love. But this is a, an industry-wide problem that people just cannot figure out a way an industry that is so profitable that is more profitable than like movies and music right it's like combined it's like, it's like vastly a money making machine and yet somehow we still cannot figure out a way to treat everybody in the ecosystem fairly like the developers fairly the cus the consumers fairly everybody should be getting their you know it should be it should be laughs and giggles all around right everybody's getting what they want players get great games and great monetization developers get secure jobs and and the companies can make their money and yet somehow we keep fucking it up. And I think I saw Phil Spencer quote that was something along the lines of like, oh yeah, we just, you know, we we had to make these things because we couldn't really, f we weren't getting the growth we wanted. And people were like, well, you're obsessed with this idea of like arbitrary growth. Have you thought about maybe just putting out good games and like being <laughs> being satisfied with just like the game having its own reward? It's like but good yeah. art cannot exist under the guise of capitalism though. They seek to destroy each other. These are two opposing ends because because good art takes time, it's it's not going to be money first. Like the best pieces of art we see out there, um, think of the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once, right? That didn't have the budget that Avengers movies ever ever did. It had a budget of like, what, 20 million at most? It had two editors working on it? Two! That's insane! If you've seen the movie, you know. But um, yeah, no, I think those two exist in direct conflict and it just... It is a shame. I, I think also another relevant thing to bring up is the reception of Overwatch because we're talking about the wider ecosystem right now of, of, of gaming. And Bones, I'm going to take it to you because, you know, you mentioned something earlier where you were like, I feel confused that I don't understand why this game doesn't seem to get a fair reputation. Like, it seems like... Yeah. It's so, so, so what has been your perspective of how the media reports around Overwatch? Like, how have you felt? And it, it, have you felt any dissonance with, like, the game you experience versus the game you read about? Like, what has been your experience? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like the, I think also the climate of social media at the moment, I think also directly impacts the way that we discuss games in online spaces. Um, for example, like you guys know that on uh, Twitter, when somebody has a blue check mark and they, you know, they might say something a little out of pocket and it gets all of these impressions and things like that, that then becomes money to that person. So a lot of people out there have every reason and it's like, I'm not saying it's anybody's fault, but people have every reason to say, to talk shit about something to to garner conflict, to garner clout and things like that, but also to just stir up a storm around something. And so when I take that into consideration as somebody who has only been in Overwatch 2 since it started, um, I think that in a lot of ways, like social media is just set up in a way at the moment where talking about things in a positive light doesn't get a reaction and therefore doesn't get clicks. And so I think what I've seen of Overwatch in a lot of ways is people not, it's not like clickbait, but people have it in their interests just because of the nature of social media to say inflammatory things or something that will be, you know, cause conflict among a community. Um, and I think that in a lot of ways, what I've seen of Overwatch in like the overall space has been it, it, it's not the same as the game that i play you know what i mean like i i get on and like i get frustrated because like you know i'm just like sometimes i'm like wow this game this game sucks you know what oh, i yeah. mean oh yeah oh yeah it's never from a <laughs> it's never from a perspective of the game is bad no because the devs have created something beautiful and i love the characters and i love the community and things like that um but like you know it's it's very much uh the game does what it says it does on the box and i can't complain about that like i i get on and i enjoy playing this game i if i didn't and then i wouldn't play it um but then to go to spaces like twitter and like the media and things like that and to hear about how it's fallen off and how it's a dead game everybody loves to throw that phrase around they're like 
they love getting in the comments. They're like dead game. It's it, no matter how good a hot fix is or what the latest seasonal update is or, you know, what the next battle pass looks like. Everybody loves getting in the comments of things like this and saying dead game. And that's like really frustrating because it's it feels very much not that way to me. Like I look at things and I'm like, wow, I'm really excited about all the things that are coming out for this game. Like they do so much to put so much into it, like with what they can, like in regards to like what Fariha mentioned about like, you know, capitalism, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's very much the um, devs are doing what they can. And I believe that wholeheartedly um, with everything that I am. I look at the work that goes into this game and I know it to be true that the people working on it are just like a bunch of nerds like us who want the stories to be told, who want the game to be better, who want the game to feel really good and like nothing else out there. Um, and so when I see the general consensus around it, like not being good or needing to be changed or like constantly being picked at, I get kind of like, like just I get a little bit bummed out because I'm like, that's the game that I like, man. Like, you, why are you going to talk so much shit about the game I like? Like, I don't understand. So it is, it's confusing and interesting to navigate, but also I think that I'm far enough removed from things like competitive play that it doesn't ultimately impact my day-to-day -day life. I don't make consistent content surrounding Overwatch. Um, I am just pretty much like casual Overwatch enjoyer. Um, but I could see how this would negatively impact people who create content surrounding this and how they are constantly being, you know, picked apart and like having people come into their comment section and be like, why do you play this? Like, it's so trash. I'm like, this is hard, man. It, it's <laughs> interesting. It's interesting to watch. And I think that, like I said, like being far removed from the way that Overwatch originally was to how it is now, um, I think has kind of kept me in a space where it doesn't feel so shitty that mm. everybody loves to like seemingly loves to rip on it and say that it's a dead game and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you very well said. And uh, of course it's natural for us as players to get biased because, you know, we, especially, you know, I'm sure the, the shill accusations are never far, but as content creators, we, you know, our livelihoods are attached to our watch. So we, we have double yeah. um, attachment to the game, but that, I don't, you know, Sam, we're never averse to criticize in the game. It's just that, it feels like a lot of the criticisms are, are unfair, right? And, and 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 how do you view what Bones has just spoken about? It's pretty on the money. Uh, most, especially about like social media nowadays, just in general, being about like, you know, the good stories never get the clicks, right? It's always the, the bad ones, which is why, you know, I took like a three month vacation from Twitter where I just like literally straight up deactivated my account last summer. It was great. I actually yeah. was just reading Marvel comics all the time and then just diving into new stories and just taking a break for the mental health sake. It was just so much like, you know, just like sadness all the time and sometimes i can i can contribute to that but i always try to be honest when give credit where it's due and i think most people believe it or not actually some of the most of the articles that actually came out like talking about them canceling the pve some of them actually were like yeah this was the right decision you know and i i think that's good i and believe it or not i actually do think a lot of that public perception of overwatch is kind of starting to do a 180 with like what, what the new competitive system season nine right you know ventures design uh, mythics being earnable, map reworks, right? You know, it's a, a lot of things they did, like, I think are going to change the perception. Now, it's not going to, you're, you're not, Rome wasn't built in one night, right? You're not going to snap your fingers and everybody's going to be like, oh, yo, you know, uh, but, you know, I think they're, they're on the right path and this is kind of just where, where they should be. And I, I'm glad to see some honesty coming out. And here, here's the other, here's the other part, SCB. I had that, that one tweet with, with Avril that went a little viral that we, I was just, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and that one went viral about the, the Marvel Netties game. So th there will be a new big bad villain to, to, to grab the attention of whatever people want to go online to complain about, because there's always going to be something it's, you know, we've been in this space for a long time. It's always going to be something right. And Sometimes we partake, sometimes we do the opposite. Um, but I think as long as they keep doing what they're doing right now, that that perception is kind of going to turn around a lot. You know, the, the, the game's like, you know, they're, they're, they're putting out content. You know, there's six skins, six characters. And to, to this day, and even it, it frustrated, you know what frustrated me this weekend? When everyone's like, this new Marvel game, it's a 6v6 style Overwatch uh, game. And then every uh, time, every single time, the gameplay comes out, it's, whether it's Valorant, whether it's uh, 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 the finals, whether it's uh, 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 th this game now. 
I, it looks so much more like a different game than Overwatch. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, guys, what are we doing? You know, like, like that game looked like Paladin. That looked like Realm Royale. And that's fine. I, I don't mind it because, again, I guess they want you to see, like, the Marvel characters, like, that you're playing, whatever it may be. You know, I'll be, I'll be inting on Spider-Man. Emong Sweet had me dead. That was so funny. Um, but uh, I, I, guess I got lost again. Uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, the bottom line is I, I agree with pretty much all of that, yeah. Yeah, so what 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 Sam's referring to there is Marvel Rivals, which has been announced a couple days, I think a couple days ago now, and it, it's yeah. kind of it's very interesting. I think what it really shows you is 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 how much the cultural impact of Overwatch remains because it was marketed as a six v six version of Overwatch, but with Marvel superheroes, and then it really like just from, you know there's only one trailer, so it's hard to say, but yeah, as people have remarked that yeah. it looked a lot more like Paladins, yeah, and of course it's inspired by Overwatch, and again it's clear the legacy of Overwatch is that like you know the the mechanics of how the things work is very clear, right? It's like mm-hmm. they all have like these you know four three to four abilities, and they their Q ultimate as their button, uh, Q button yeah. as their ultimate, and like all these hero combos and and the dynamic color of it, but of course people rush to call it Overwatch, and it shows you how much people want to capitalize on the height that Overwatch reached and the influence that it has, that people want to tell potential customers, oh, it's like Overwatch, but better. It's the Overwatch you miss, <laughs> right? It's the Overwatch yeah, you guys miss yeah. that you guys lament for. Come come play all you guys that used to love Overwatch. This, we got a new game for you. So it's very interesting, and I want to I wanna take Freya's opinion on it, but first I want to quickly get my little uh, bugaboo out, which is that when we were talking about the coverage of, of the game, I actually made a tweet about this and... Uh, <laughs> I, I was I was upset because there was an article by a journalist. Uh, I'll, I'll you know what for the sake of just being above pettiness, I will keep them unnamed. It was an article by a journalist who uh, said that it was you know that it was it was a fair article or other parts of the article were fair, but the opening of the article was something along the lines of Overwatch changes its monetization model from you know pay battle pass heroes to free heroes, and this leads observers to asking, is Overwatch struggling? And the rest of the article had like a good scoop about well they're not getting their bonuses this year. The developers, you know, usually at Blizzard, uh, there's like a a, sh- a share splitting kind of bonus system where if you if your game makes a lot of revenue, you get like a lot of bonus on it. But the details of it is that it's been changed over the years, so now it's it's per game rather than per Blizzard. So if you're a developer at Blizzard, you don't just get the bonus for the company doing well. Your game specifically that you're working on has to do well. And this last year, Overwatch's developers didn't get a, like, they got 0% as, like, their bonus. But it was very interesting because, again, the article framed it as, Overwatch announced the heroes are going to be free, and this leads observers to ask, is the game struggling? And I was like, what, what, who's, who are these observers that are saying that Overwatch, like, that heroes being free is a sign of Overwatch struggling? Like, that's when I get upset about the unfair coverage of Overwatch, because it's like, they've made an objectively good move, right? They've, they've made a good and... F- Move that's in the interest and fairness of consumers. The one major complaint that anyone could have had about the monetization of Overwatch, barring the price of skins and all that, is that the, the <laughs> heroes are in the battle pass and that's somehow unfair and pay to win and, you know, not cool. And then they go and they, they make a very reasonable change and the devs are like, we want to create a fair game. And they say, okay, now all Overwatch, all Overwatch heroes are going to be free forever. And the media's response to that is, oh, this must indicate that Overwatch is struggling. So that is unfortunately, while you're right, Sam, that we have seen a shift, we ha- we are seeing the media perception be more ge- positive in general, it's still annoying that this sentiment pervades that like almost misframing the events to make it seem like Overwatch is shit or dying or like a bad place is still a profitable way to get clicks and, and like in this case, sell your book because the whole article was just like, you can read more about it in my book. And then when I call and when I called him out on Twitter, the journalist blocked me very promptly. So <laughs> Hey, um, you did it. So yeah, you know, you know you might have ruffled a feather there for the investigative journalism of of hey, are you sure this is an accurate way of framing this news? <laughs> but um Fariha, you talk to me now. I mean, I think you wanted to go off a little bit on the Marvel Rivals thing, but any <laughs> any thoughts on yeah, just the general uh, coverage around Overwatch? I think a lot of it is um it, it lacks integrity. I'm gonna say it. There are so there's so much stuff that you could criticize when it comes to Overwatch, and they don't point at those things, and instead they point at the other boogeymans that they've managed to dredge up. And uh, it, it's like you said, right? They they invent things to get upset about. They will c- 
conspire about, oh, well, they're doing this because the game is struggling. So yes, they're doing the Steam thing because the game is dead and dying. And it's like, no, that is not what's happening. Um, but as to as to Marvel Rivals, I just thought it was so hilarious the way that people were so quick to jump into saying that this is going to be the Overwatch killer. Remember when Apex was going to be the Overwatch killer? Remember when Valorant was going to be the Overwatch killer? Remember when Crucible or uh, what was the what was the Ubisoft game that that came out? Oh, um, I know what you're talking about. Hyper the, the, like, hyper hyperspace hyperscape hyperscape hyperscape. Remember when all of these things were were going to be so called Overwatch killers because they were hero shooters? Well, it's like that's not enough, you know. Uh, the, the definition of a hero shooter is not the box that Overwatch is bound by. And there's not a single game on the market that is like it, right? Like I said earlier, it's kind of ruined other FPS games for me because it has this dynamicism to it where each character is so distinct and readable in their own way, but they all have such an interesting way of interacting with each other that you just don't get in other games. In, in, the, in those other games, like you all have access to the same pool of guns, the same pool of weapons with just like slightly different flavor text around what kind of flash flashbang you get to throw and i don't know it, it just when it comes to marvel rivals that's that's a gripe i had with the public's reaction about it but also it just might be me being a bit jaded as a marvel fan recently and feeling like this is another like raw capitalism moment so like i shoot i put away my, my little red cap i was gonna put on my cobby cap for a second <laughs> but <laughs> It just feels like Marvel is really, really, really beholden to the shareholders. You know, they're trying to appeal to as many people as possible. And so they end up making these stories and these characters that are as wide as an ocean, but as deep as a puddle. And it's really such a shame because you, you see this with like um, a bunch of superhero media recently in, in terms of films, in terms of TV shows. It's this attempt to rake in the cash but it sacrifices the art for it. And, and whenever something has a big license and a big, uh, a big brand IP slapped on it, it has that additional pressure to rake in the cash, to print the money. And, and that gets in the way of good game design. So I'm like initially just super cynical about it. I'm like, that's how you get mobile games. Because what is a mobile game? A mobile game is a low budget, but like high revenue kind of game that isn't founded on actually good game design. It's on manipulative game design and monetization. And this is where, Sam, your tweet went viral because you kind of shared an image of uh, the Marvel heroes and it said I unowned. I was just trying to troll, There was a category, man. yeah. <laughs> I was like, because Avril was like sending me a bunch of tweets, so I was like, you know, I'm gonna throw, I'll throw on the unknown, and then it just went, it went crazy, and I was like, I don't even know, I didn't even mean to do this. Like, I, I definitely want to try it out. I think what I've kind of learned with games nowadays to kind of build off what Fariha said is, you know, it's, it's low expectations, you know, and we'll see what happens when it comes out. That's where I'm at with it, and the mobile gaming points on the money too, because I think back, I think mobile gaming accounts for about like seventy percent of gaming revenue at least it, like back in 2020 it was like 70 percent. my guess is that number is maybe even grown even more given how much more accessible mobile devices are in tons of regions all over the world where like pcs aren't so much so a lot of these big companies especially the publicly traded ones have catered a ton of games towards towards mobile because of that to get into that market and it just it's fr the frustrating aspect of it is you don't see the quality increase you just see the range i love that line where what did you say it's as wide as an ocean but as deep as a puddle see I'm a science guy, so I can't think of stuff like that. But I'm definitely going to be stealing your lines because that's pretty on the money for a lot of the stuff that you know I, I, I've seen recently where it's just they, they need to take notes from Avatar The Last Airbender is what they need to do. That's all. <laughs> that's all. Still haven't seen the live action. I don't think I will. I'm but scared. Um, I'm scared. I'm scared. Yeah, I don't know if I want to. Buckle but up. Oh, God. Bones, any, any things you want to add on this topic before we move on to maybe actually talking about venture? I have... I, I have a question for you guys, actually. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to everything that we've kind of talked about, what do you think the obsession is with Overwatch killers? Like, games in spaces that we all love. Like, what do you think the deal with is with people being like, this needs to be the this killer? 
because that seems to come up a lot, like in the discourse surrounding games, just in general. Um, it's something that like, so <laughs> gonna be a little sacrilegious here. I'm actually an Apex player, like first and foremost, like that's the game that I kind of like got into. And when people, when, when, if anybody were to compare Apex and Overwatch together, I would just be like, that's just this uh, <laughs> apples and oranges at this point, in my opinion. Like, because because I came from Apex and started playing Overwatch, I'm like, these are two completely different games, and that's why I play both of them. What do you think the obsession is with things like Overwatch Killers specifically? Why? Like, why are so many people like, oh, this needs to topple this? I'm like, why not just, like, let games be a thing and, like, enjoy them all? I think. I think it comes from a place of entitlement, one, but also content. Because yeah. I, I feel like people will take a couple bad rounds of Overwatch or over a couple of days or years or whatever, and they will distill that into this really, really potent venom that they will use to kind of, I don't know, trash Overwatch every chance they get. Because yeah. they had a bad night with it or something like yeah. that. But what's your take on it? Sam, you can go first. I'll go. I'll go after. I, uh, I think it's because nobody's done it better. It's it's yeah. a ceiling that got established seven years ago. Nobody's beaten it. Obviously, there's definitely the contempt, and there's people. It's it's a very it's a very shallow way of thinking, in my opinion, because yeah, when when you break it down and you look at again, like Apex has come out, right? Valorant's mm. come out, like like all of these games have carved out a very specific gameplay loop and niche that fit like their community and their style. Overwatch is, I mean, visually, just from going from, I, I played a lot of Warzone. That was the game that I played for a while. Um, yeah. It was so hard to see people. It was so hard to see everything. Like, the engine, like, was less optimized. Like, everything about the world building that Overwatch has done, mm -hmm. I feel like has been unrivaled in the genre. So everyone, to this day, despite everything that's happened, despite the executive team at Activision just absolutely fumbling and, you know, making everybody's lives harder that still has not been taken away. So as long as you hold the belt, somebody's mm. going to want to come take it from you, right? And yeah. I, think that's, I think that's all it really is. But obviously different people are going to have different reasons. Some people are just petty mm. on the internet. The, the internet and petty, what are we talking about, Re right? You know, Real. Uh, um, but no, I think that's, it's, a good, it's a good point. And I, I wish mm. more people would see it the way that you do, where it's like apples and oranges. But don't you know there's only one fruit? You know, it's, it's like, yeah. okay, God. all right, yeah, sure, sure. Whatever, whatever you say, I'm going to go enjoy my plethora of fruits because I like oranges and I yeah. like apples and I like bananas and I like strawberries. As That's long as it. it's not, what, what is that? I can do a little bit of grapefruit, but it's a little bit sour. You know what I'm saying? So I can't <laughs> do that one, but you guys get what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm like, I'm yeah. yeah, I think I think as well, it, it, in, in many ways, it, sh it should just be considered a compliment because it does indicate mm. in my mind the dominance of Overwatch in that space because I think the tag of like X killer only really comes in spaces that are overly saturated. And I think back to right. the most dom most common other place I've heard X killer is MMOs and where it's like mm. everyone's been dying for a World of Warcraft killer for like 20 years, right? Like for the, all, <laughs> since it's since it's launched, people because it was such a dominant genre because nothing is like ever really rivaled it until recently with maybe Final Fantasy 14, which is maybe the only game that has ever given some worry to World of Warcraft. But even then, World of Warcraft is still the dominant MMO, right? People are always dying for like, we need a World of Warcraft killer. Because I think what it is, mm. is like, it it, it 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 taps into every associated emotion that people would have with World of Warcraft, right? Because so many people, when you've got such a dominant title in a genre as World of Warcraft is, people have either played it or disliked it, right? Like they've either, either like played it or they never mm -hmm. want to play it. And they've either played it and fallen out of love with it or play it and still love it. And all those people can be caught by the title of WoW Killer because... You, if you hate it now, you're like, yes, I want a different thing. I want the kind of thing that WoW was, but I want a better version. And of course, if you're currently playing and you're loving it and people are like, we have a better version coming, you're going to be like, oh shit, okay, maybe I'll try that. So yeah. I think I think what it speaks to is like, yeah, the fact that Overwatch has had this space in the hero shooter where nothing is really quite compared. And all these other games have been of like slightly different genres as well. So nothing has really come in that same space to rival Overwatch. Because I, I don't really hear that conversation in the Battle Royale genre, for example, right? There's no, I don't, I don't really yeah. hear people talking about Battle Royales like Fortnite killers because I think all those titles have existed in the same mm. space already comfortably. There's already been a good diversity of titles there where there's, there's the Warzone, there's Fortnite, there's Apex. Those are a lot more similar to each other. And yet we never hear people like pitting them against each other in that same way because mm. I think that, that, that sub-genre is not so like... It already has diverse space. It doesn't have the one. It doesn't have the one thing that's like the the monolithic title. 
Mm. Sam, what are, you, what are you saying? Well, I wonder if it has to do with competitiveness as well, because BRs are generally more casual game modes. Like, obviously, they have ranked modes, right? But, you know, when it comes to, like, yeah. a, a locked-in hero shooter, there, there's, like, more esports leagues, there's more stuff like that. I wonder if it's just the competitive nature of, like, tax shooter players and mm. just gen generally, like, online toxicity that comes along with that that you're going to struggle to get rid of. It, it, it's an interesting idea, but the, the idea of something being a Fortnite killer at this point is hilarious. You know, I yeah. just that's, yeah. a, that's a funny line. I've never, you know, just funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think may maybe there's something to that. I mean, I think it would certainly shouldn't feel that way with MMOs. Like, MMOs also feel like a pretty... I guess they're pretty grindy, but they're not necessarily mm -hmm. the, like, competitive per se. So it's interesting. I'm sure there could be some analysis done into why, why coverage is done this way. But does that sort of answer your question, Bones? Is there any other thoughts you wanted yeah. to share? No, that was, like, that was a really good perspective to kind of get at just because I, I've always wondered about it. And it feels like Overwatch is very much in the spotlight for that. It feels like a very targeted game where people are like, oh, this is the Overwatch killer. Like, that is what I've heard. That's what, like, mm -hmm. like Sam said, like, you don't really see it often in, like, the Battle Royale scene. Like, it's not like that. But people, for some reason, look at Overwatch and they're just like, this is this is the one. And that kind of, I think, also speaks to how well it's done and how unique it is in the shooter space. And um, it's just, like, easy, like, interesting to get the perspective of people that you know work around overwatch for a living like it's interesting it kind of sucks that people it feels trendy to hate overwatch or to try and dunk on overwatch and the people that play overwatch like even content creators who you know build their lives around this game it's just like they're gonna they're gonna air their grievances with you know what the game looks like and it's just like i think that a lot of people sometimes misinterpret that like a criticism, a general, like a genuine criticism with the game as uh, everybody hates it and it's, you know, trendy to shit on it, so. I think you hit the nail on the head, though, when you said that Overwatch gets this because it's on top. Yeah. You don't plot and conspire to kill some random guy, you plot and conspire to kill the king. Yeah. And I feel like Overwatch is that in many aspects. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a touching stone. Again, it's I think what you're indicating there is like we're gonna kill this, like almost like an idea, right? Not to get all Batman Begins, but it's like you're greater than the game. You're an idea. Um, <laughs> great movie, by the way. Great, it is a great movie. Great movie. Great movie. So good. So, so it's like you know, it's like it's the idea of what Overwatch represents that like trying to like oh I can usurp that is is I think what's appealing to the yeah. And again, why why yes. something like Marvel Rivals that doesn't really like it does have of course inspirations from Overwatch clearly but again it's not yes. it's not rivaling Overwatch in the same space so calling it so even them themselves Fine. deliberately marketing it as a oh it's like Overwatch but Marvel but it, it just tells you I think that they're trying to aim it's, for there's that there's a reason title. why they said Overwatch and not Paladins knowing damn well that game well yeah you know like nobody Paladins nobody advertised themselves like we're you know that mediocre game that nobody plays we're like that guys come play our game yeah. like come play our That's version dude Every time I mention Paladins, the Paladins apologists come out, and, and I understand if you enjoy that game, you're welcome to, but to compare it and be like, oh, it's better than Overwatch, you are so fucking high. Like, oh my gosh, just look at the stats, look at the cultural impact between the two games, it is, it is not even in the same ballpark, not even in the same league. Do you know how many people are playing Paladins right now as we speak? I look this up and I memorize the number, 4,200 people. 4,200 active players. Overwatch, Overwatch has like 380 something thousand. I don't know what Not Paladins even in is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I've never heard of it. We so well, we I mean that that that, that worms, kind of probably yeah know? that probably kind of says everything. Here's you your know. answer, actually. <laughs> yeah, Wait, probably we tells you everything. Australia yet? Has it made it? Here? <laughs> it's been there for <laughs> longer than Overwatch. It. It's been out for 15 years, maybe longer than that. Has it? Maybe. Oh yes. man, I yes. suck. Yes. No, it's 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 different. It's like you know. But that's it's really funny that you say that. I'm gonna quote Stephen A. Smith to follow up on on Freya. Stay off the weed or whatever he says. It's so funny. It's just that you gotta be. They're, you're cooked. You're you're as fried as like a Thanksgiving turkey with that take. If you're saying work, and, and it, you like Baked. Paladins, all good. But like let's let's yeah. let's get real. Let's get real here. It's like saying BlackBerry compared to the iPhone. Like let's not. Let's not we don't need. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, when you're kind of like a more niche sub community, it's very easy to become very like strong yeah. insular feeling because it's like it reminds yeah. me of like heroes of the storm right where people who are like who were who were real champions of heroes of the storm be like it's better than dota and league i promise guys it's like the real it's the real one and it's like i appreciate that you feel that way but the mass majority of people don't so while i you know respect your opinion that's just not how it is um okay 
let's then move on to the t the titular character of this discussion, which is Venture. So we now have all gotten a chance. I mean, I think a couple of us got to try Venture a little bit early in, in Irvine, but now everyone's gotten to try Venture. And let's start with actually, I want to start with the more fun element, which is actually the reception to the hero's personality. Before we talk about the gameplay, and, and I know, Sam, you'll have loads to give us about like how the gameplay operates. But I want to talk about, because I think this is the first time I can remember in recent memory where the community has so quickly embraced a character and kind of come up with their own lore for the character. Even before their, like, Venture isn't even launched yet. Like, we don't, we're not even officially in Venture territory. And yet, to give an example of what I'm referring to, the community has come up with this backstory that Venture eats rocks. And it's Absolutely. it was never, like, canonical initially, but it, uh, very quickly the narrative team are like, you know what? This is canon now. Venture eats rocks, and that's where the chip Wait, really? tooth came from. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the, the narrative team have kind of, like, incorporated this, and they're like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Venture eats rocks. Let's go with it. So, uh, funny. I think it's, like, a really fun indicator of what, like, perhaps Bones was alluding to with, like, the Overwatch community and their... The, lore, the people who are like passionate about lore and stuff and, and kind of coming up with their own ideas for how the characters would be out of the game. So uh, let's talk about, yeah, the reception of Venture, the character. Uh, and we'll take it to Freya first. Freya, how have you viewed the, yeah, the dynamism and the personality of Venture? I love them. Every time they do something, my heart flutters a little bit. It's just like, have you have you guys seen the little animations of their fidgets? Of when they're doing nothing and then they'll just like they'll just do that out of nowhere if they're standing still it's adorable yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> that's all. That's do all. elaborate that, that's it that's I, I mean that's the tweet i just i think that it's so fun to have a hero that is so excited about life and the things that they love i don't think we had that before in overwatch like i said earlier the the closest we have is Tracer, but when you think about Overwatch and its characters, um, they're they're all kind of grounded in trauma, right? Like Baptiste is an orphan, Mercy is an orphan, um, so many of uh, Cass is an orphan, Sombra is an orphan. Like all of them are like dead parents. My life is shit. I do this work because I have to, you know. And then just to have this little guy who's excited about digging. <laughs> It, it it makes me happy, man. It just makes me happy. We're gonna, it's it's the Batman effect. I hate to go back to it again, but it's like when they murder your parents, you got no choice but to be a vigilante. Like that's that's the only pathway <laughs> left to a to a motherfucker. It's like, all right, then I guess I gotta fight crime now. Um, and I will say, um, before, oh my gosh, okay. So, if any of you happen to be critters or into Critical Role. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Jester Lavore is the perfect example of yes. this sort of thing. Because yes. when you have a cast full of these <laughs> incredibly <laughs> jaded characters who, nope. whose lives are shit and who are just, you know, beat down by the elements, to have a character who is, um, naive isn't the right word for it, but to be more full of light and to be a bit more innocent and to be more um, young in that way is really, really important to show mm. that kind of contrast and to be a foil to the sort of character so you can tell even better stories. And so yeah. I think that aspect is really cool too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I will let Bones relate here because I, I'm not a critter. When you said, are you a critter? I was like... I'm not an animal. Oh. Like, wh what do you what do you mean? <laughs> but yeah, go ahead, Bones. Um, yeah, so I definitely get what you mean. I think that in a lot of, like, shooters especially, like, it's so easy to go after grizzled, like, you know, hard done by characters. Like, you know, characters like, you know, Reaper and Soldier 76, they have these dark backstories, right? Everybody, everybody loves to play those characters. I love getting on Reaper and being an edgy dickhead and being like, my soul is black. <laughs> like, that's fun. Um, but there's something about a character who's just like, just a, just a scrunkly little guy. And they're just like, you know, I love rocks and like, that's pretty cool. And they just have like these mannerisms that like Fariha said, that it's just like a light and it provides a contrast to characters that are inherently darker. Um, and I think with Venture, um, and again, like Fariha said, like, I think the a similar um, energy level that we get, we get from Tracer, but Tracer is very you know, um, 
she's like almost manic pixie dream girl kind of vibes where she's just like all over the place and she's very sweet and that's really lovely. But I think the venture appeals to the people that are just, just happy, like happy people going through life and enjoying the things that they enjoy. And I think that kind of grounds them a lot as a character. I think that that's you want to relate to Venture because you see Venture and you're just like, I want to see the world that they see the world because I think the way that they see it is good and fun and real. And um, and I think that we get that a lot with characters that kind of err on the edge of like ADHD. Um, for like characters that aren't necessarily neurotypical. I think that we see that a lot with characters who just they have their interests and their hyper fixations and their passions and they are unapologetic about that and I know that's a lot to kind of gain from like to gleam gleam from a character that we know not a lot about but what I'm getting from Venture is that is just this character is just like I have so many wonderful interests that I love being a part of and like like I said, like, it's like, it's a lot to get from a character that we haven't like experienced a lot of yet. Like we hardly have any like interactions or like a backstory, but like, if that is the kind of impression that I am getting from this character, it says a lot about the thought and the care that has gone into creating somebody so relatable from the get go. Um, and like, you know, me as being a queer person and, uh, someone who's, um, I like to call myself neuro spicy and well seasoned. Um, <laughs> it was just like, I saw this character and I was immediately filled with like, just joy. I don't know. They just, they have that about them. Um, and in a game like Overwatch, like I'm sure like Sam, you can speak to like playing the character for like their abilities and like the way that they balance a game. But you also said that you were just like, oh, they're fun. Like I like they're a little they're a goofball and you just kind of like do you do, do you kind of feel like the game like was is more fun when you get to play a character where you're just like this character is like just a scrunkly, you know, little little guy kind of vibe. Yeah, honestly, most of this stuff is your all's wheelhouse, not mine. So I love listening to you guys talk yeah. about this stuff because it's a lot of it goes over my head. Like I was kind of hardwired. Like I was a kid that got a B in art class when you show up and get an A. To be honest, um, <laughs> no, I'm not even kidding. About it. I, I, don't, I don't say that as a joke. Like, I, that oh, unironically bestie. happened. That un I, I, listen, oh. Mr. Berman and I are still good friends. You know, we, we he loved me, but like man, I couldn't draw inside the lines, and we both. I I, I told him I accepted. Faye. I was one of like maybe five kids in 10 years that got a B in art class, but I deserved it. And we, we all had a good laugh about it, but no, I definitely noticed. I usually don't notice this, that kind of stuff in, in, in characters, mm. but I noticed it in venture. And that was the, 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 the character has the, the identity of the character. I'm trying to put this into words. Cause this is just, again, this is not my wheelhouse. So I struggle like with articulating this kind of stuff, but you're good. You're good. It, I, I, I can't explain it, but I know it's there. And that's not always yeah. true. I think Ram like Ramakshra is another good example of Overwatch 2 character that came out that was like very dark themed and people like they were very, att even Junker Queen too, actually, which, which mm. had like the Borderlands theme. And I was about that. I was about that. I was kind of like jamming out a little bit, you know, I, I had a good time with that. And I, I, I love, well, I'm not going to go off on a tangent. I want to stay focused. Um, but no, I, I noticed it, and usually I don't. So it was so good that I noticed it. You know they're doing something right because mm, these things, yeah. like these social cues, just go straight over my head. I'll be honest. Yeah. With you. Um. But no, it was it was it was nice, and it, I, I I can kind of relate. And I I Freya said this a lot, and I I kind of I, I hear it, but I, I struggle to understand it sometimes. Where it's about like character identities and relating to them because there hasn't been a mm. character. Like the closest one I had was Genji, and I, I was just inting because of the dragon short. I, you know, I'll be honest, uh, <laughs> real but based. It it was, you know, the the passion for just something simple like rocks kind of reminded me of like how much I love gaming, and it's yeah, it's like you know what I like rocks, and I'm going in, and I I'm I like that. That's it. So I, I yeah. it's the first time I really felt mm. it. That's yeah. intangible. So mm. I liked it. You know. Yeah, yeah I love that. I th I think. To kind of make a wider point on media in general, what we're kind of seeing is the death of earnestness in like characters, right? Like it's a, it's a kind of larger shift in media in general. You can look at this in like superhero movies and stuff, where it's like the natural trend of things that you start with 
first like earnest characters right characters that are straightforward they say what they feel and like that are kind of wearing their hearts in their sleeves but after a while that becomes lame and cheesy and cringe because you know how it's going to go right you know how the story's going to go you know the rom-com is going to end up with the with the couple reuniting and being happy you eventually the audience starts to know how the story beats go and and so you transition from like a superman who's just like oh, i am a man and i fly and i'm strong and uh, i fight for justice and then you start to transition to characters who are a bit more edgy, who have a bit more darkness to them, who have a bit more like, I'm going to surprise you sometimes. Like, I'm going to undercut what you think mm. I'm going to do. And you start getting like, you know, first you get like the Batmans of the world, the anti-heroes, but then eventually you get like the Deadpools of the world, right? You get like the, yeah. I'm going to like, not only am I completely defying your expectations, I'm even going to break the fourth wall and acknowledge that I'm a superhero and undercut how lame it even is to be a superhero, right? Like, oh man, like, aren't superhero movies dumb? Like, and look at this, like, we couldn't hire this guy because of contractual obligations with Sony. Zinger, like, you guys get it because I'm talking to you because you know you've seen 50 superhero movies. So you know already what I'm referring to. So it's like the evolution of art always kind of follows these pathways where it starts referencing itself more and more because it knows that, like, its audience is already already knows what's going to happen if we don't try and reverse their mm -hmm. expectations. And that's kind of what we've seen in gaming where, you know, you start with like the, the, the goofy, funny characters, but then after a while it runs like, that's cheesy and lame. I don't want a character who's just like open about what they like and like just speaks from the heart. No, no, no. Give me an edgy guy. Give me a Batman. cool war torn veteran. Give me, you know, like, and then you, but then that starts to become the stereotype. Then Soldier 76 is now every, every motherfucker is Soldier 76. Every guy's like, ah, oh, kids get off my lawn and I'm a fucking, oh, I hate people and I fight for justice, yeah. but I do it begrudgingly. So it's actually nice to kind of come back full circle now and in a in an ecosystem where everyone is edgy everyone is like trying to be like that but cool i'm i'm like that but i'm different right i'm i'm that character mm. but i have a little bit more edge to me and then a the character comes along who's like i'm just a little guy i just do silly little things and like i like rocks i like eating rocks and that's about it man like that's that's me and i you know i tell it how it is and i think yeah. that's what people have really embraced where yeah. It's nice to have a character that's like really earnest, that just like mm, it, sure. is what they say and and isn't trying to be like cool or like or different, you know, like a pick me, right? Like I'm different. It's just like I'm, yeah. I'm just me, and and that's kind of yeah. I think people really appreciated that. Gosh, like um, like the Borderlands three villains, I felt had that just like had to have a quip every thirty seconds. It was just pure sarcasm, that sort of thing, and. I, I don't know, like like you said, right? Venture is not afraid to be cringe. But the thing yeah. is, to be cringe is to be free. Be free. And That's it. Exactly. And and we don't see a lot of media do this nowadays, so it's just so refreshing. Yeah, I definitely love it. Any any more thoughts on their personality before we before we move on? Any more thoughts on that sphere them. you guys want to you love them? <laughs> I love them. I think I think they're just like I think they're a breath of fresh air in that they're not going too hard on them being like, you know, the the over the top bubbly character. Mm. I think it's really cool that they've settled in this space where I think Venture's just cool. Like I saw like the snippets of them like when they were like getting teased and things like that. I'm like, this is a cool character. Like this feels like fun and like anybody would well, most people will pick up this character and be like, yeah, fun, fun little scrunkly. Let's go dive in. Let's eat some rocks. But um, there have been there have been people who are just like flat out. I'm not playing this character because they have pronouns. And I'm like, all right, well, you get to miss out because they're they're fucking sick and you should just go and uh, kick rocks with open to open open toe shoes. Like, go cry about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, this this actually moves nicely on what I was going to talk about next is that this is an issue you know we haven't we haven't explicitly talked about it yet on the podcast but i definitely want to which is that venture is the first non-binary character that overwatch has released and of course and, and coincidentally it's come at the same time that valorant have done the same thing with clove i believe that they, they've done this yeah. they've released a hero who's also non-binary and, and apex already had bloodhound so we're yep. seeing this kind of take place in the gaming space and of course anytime progress occurs or anytime changes occurs it it causes a discussion point. We can we can say like the pos the positive version of it is that people learn and people grow and, and more people are introduced to a thing and yeah. they kind of they kind of expand their horizons, as many of us will hopefully be doing on the launch of venture. But then there's the negative side where it also brings out the bigotry in people. It brings out the worst in people and they just can't help being fucking weird about it. So I would love 
in particular, maybe Bones, your POV, and Freya, your POV as well, on just the issue of representation and having Venture as a non-binary hero. Like, what can you, in fact, I'll ask Freya to go first and then Bones you next. Because what I would love for Freya to give me first, and I know she's very eloquent at this, this is why I'm going to her first, is that why is this important? Why is this significant for you? Like, why does it matter that the character be representative of us, of people who maybe aren't normally represented in video games? Oh, gosh. This is going to be long. Are you, are you sure? Oh, I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So we've already tackled um, capitalism a bunch today, but there's another force uh, that really, really governs our society, and it's the patriarchy. And under the patriarchy, uh, everyone suffers. And it's not just that, oh, yes, because patriarchy is like, it, it suggests masculinity is the best thing, and therefore men benefit from it. Yes, in some ways they do, but men also suffer under this, and here's why. When you have a default in society, and it's masculinity, and it's all these traits that we have um, tied in with that, it makes it so that everybody, women, men, everyone in between, gets fucking condemned for not adhering to the specific roles that they are set to uphold in society. And that means that we are living by these arbitrary laws that were set by people who are long fucking dead in systems that are meant to hurt us and to exploit us and and that's just a shitty way of living life man it's like i don't want to live in a world where because of the way i'm born i am expected to spit out children i am expected to just launch babies out like a cannon you know like i <laughs> i don't, I don't want that image. to be <laughs> just <laughs> over and over again <laughs> but i i don't want that to be the default just because i was born with the chromosomes i was born with right and again for people who are assigned male at birth for instance right sometimes you don't want to be the stoic who never feels anything who never talks about their emotions who never gets to enjoy a, a multitude of hobbies right even though you have that that interest because society has these invisible boxes that it tries to stuff you in and so in my mind gender theory and gender exploration is something that is a a means of reclaiming personal freedoms and personal expression and figuring out what you want in a world that tells you what you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to want. And the real power of that is that you are not living a life beholden to other people, beholden to century-old um, preconceptions, but you are living a life that is in line with what you care about. And that is so, so important because we don't know what is in the afterlife. We don't know what happens next. All we know is that this life is what we get. Right now, tomorrow isn't guaranteed, but right now, the present is what we get. This is the life we get. And we get to choose what to do with it. And I think it's really fucking powerful to be able to live a life most true to what you want. And I know that sounds fucking corny, right? So the importance of this sort of representation is again tied to that because people should be allowed to choose. You should not feel afraid to order a sweet cocktail as a dude at a bar for fear that it will, it will um, emasculate you, right? You should not be afraid to be fucking buff and to be loud and boisterous and to take command of a room if you're AFAB, right? You should not be put in these confines just because of the way you were born. And the reason representation like Venture is so important is this is somebody who lives life true to themselves. This is who they are. Deal with it. That's fucking beautiful. Yeah, little little applause from my end, and then oh. very eloquent, <laughs> very eloquently yeah. spoken. And I think that really leads the context well to bring it to venture and, and bones. I'd love for you to follow up um, specifically on on venture as well, because 
um, you know, you you would I would love for you to speak on your experience on kind of like what it what is what has been like for you to see a non-binary hero and also the reception around it. Like, how do you how do you feel? And why do you feel like, do you feel like it's important to have these characters in gaming? And if so, why? Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if I just said no? Like, no, it's not important. <laughs> you could, you could surprise me. That's, that would be great. I'd be down for a surprise. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm Alphabet Mafia through and through. I'm going to tell you why it's fucking important. Um, yeah, so Venture. Let's start, we'll start with Venture, like, overall. Um, and the reception surrounding them as a character. Um... I would love to be here and say it's been the best thing in the world. You know what I mean? Like, I would love to get on here and say that it's been, um, like, sunshine and rainbows and that seeing, you know, uh, a canonically non-binary character come into the fold and everybody has been warm and receptive to the idea. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, but it hasn't. Like, and... Oftentimes, that is the reality of representation and diversity in uh, modern media. Um, there is a resistance to uh, any sort of diversity because a lot of people are very quick to claim it as playing the diversity card. Oh, you know, they've added this character because they need to play the diversity card. Um, and that's something that gets thrown around uh, a lot is... Everyone's so caught up in uh, things like games and movies, like shoehorning in characters that are queer or, you know, people of color or, you know, um, disabled or anything like that. People, people love to have this moment where they're just like, oh, they have to do that. So it's the diversity card. Like they have to do this. Um, and I think from my perspective, when it comes to Overwatch as a game and franchise, I look at the way that they create characters and the way that they tell stories. And I can feel that they do it very honestly. The way that they have made and created these characters are all very honest and very real. And so for Venture to come along and to, you know, join the join the squad and uh, come into the game. I was like, I was really excited because I'm non-binary as well. And I'm just a scrunkly little guy. And yeah, I have a chipped tooth because I eat rocks. Um, I was really excited to see them, but my heart kind of fell when I read comments. Like, you know, they, uh, the Overwatch um, team obviously released a bunch of like TikToks on like, hey, this is Venture, this is how you play them. Um, and very, you know, explicitly said they're non-binary and they use they, them pronouns. And people were so quick to get in the comments and be like, I can't wait to play her and she looks fun. And I'm just like, I can understand if you are somebody who is not necessarily well-versed in the queer community, especially like trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming spaces. That's totally fine. If you are somebody who is like, I'm respectful of that community, but I'm not well versed in it. And therefore I don't know um, what the etiquette surrounding those things are. That's fine. I don't think anybody should be demonized for getting it wrong because it's an honest mistake and it is just something they're maybe not used to. What grinds my gears is people who are told a piece of information pertaining to a character, look at it, receive the information and they're like i'm gonna misgender them anyway because i'm a dick that is that's where i kind of get annoyed at it it's people deliberately misgendering um characters who are brought into a space where it's like hey this is representation for maybe a group of people that aren't you um maybe they're not cis you know maybe they're not white um and i think that the addition of venture has been both really good and just a little bit disheartening that it, we are in the year of our Lord 2024. Um, and people can't just le leave people to be who they are. Um, and as a queer person in this space, it is really validating watching people who maybe have never met a trans non-binary character before or person in real life. <laughs> 
like trying you know what i mean like that's been that's been it's been good to see that where people like oh i don't know what non-binary is i'm gonna learn a little bit about it and i'm gonna try and use you know the correct pronouns like that's that's awesome but um on the other side of the coin it's just been like it's just been devastating to watch people deliberately misgender them just because they're dicks um and uh yeah, I don't know. It's 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 been a mixed bag, but from the perspective of somebody who is trans non-binary, it's it's just like I wish it was just like another day at the office. Like I very much wish that it could just be hell yeah. We got it. we did it. We got another one. That's awesome. This feels really nice. I feel very seen. I feel very, you know, um, and I and I, I would also like to mention that I speak to this point from a position of privilege in that I am white, I am middle class, and I am femme presenting. And so I am afforded a lot of characters and media that I look at and I feel represented by. Um, and I just want to point out that that's not the case for everybody. So, like, I saw a lot of tweets surrounding this where people were saying, um, hey, can we get a non-binary character that's not like, you know, a uh, quirky white person with, you know, dyed hair and piercings kind of thing. And I, and I get that. Um, and uh, I think that what is really important as well is that we, we look at diversity and we, uh, we welcome it and accept it in the forms that it takes, but we understand that we ultimately need to always be doing more and doing better um, by minority groups of people who may never get the chance to be represented. So I love Venture a lot, and I would love to see more characters like them in the future. Very well said. Bars. That was a bars. Oh my goodness. Sorry, I'm on so for the, sorry. No, don't apologize. Listen, I apologize. personally, like from a personal perspective, you know, I, I love listening to things that like, I, I, I'm not super well versed in a lot of it, but yeah. I always love to listen perspectives because from my perspective, you know, I grew up as a kid in Kentucky, and I'm not sure if you, how much you guys know about Kentucky, but Kentucky, I live in a in a very blue city, but you know, I got to see a lot mm -hmm. of different perspectives, and the people that changed my lives the most, I won't say I won't say his name because I I don't know if it's my place to say it, but you know, I I'll, I'll never forget. I've talk, talked about this a little bit on the show, SVB, the person who changed my life and my thinking for the first time. I remember the moment, the second that like I started thinking outside the boxes that kind of Fariha mentioned, and I realized that kind of my philosophy of life is kind of the same way where like nobody's going to tell me like how i have to live and that's like it's a different like i'm trying to put the people i'm a very again i'm very science and this is like very art and people this is just not my wheelhouse but um but the, the person who changed my life in the way i think was a gay man who had a daughter mm -hmm. and then he came out and what i loved about him is that he challenged me to think differently and he was the first person, like, I remember being 15 years old. And I remember the moment it happened where my mind went. It was like, it was like that thing that you did ask me that my epiphany, you remember my epiphany moment? It was like that, except me when I was 15. And he challenged the way that I thought. And like where I grew up, it is a bubble. Like there were a ton of things where, you know, like I was lucky. I was one of the more, so like I'm half Lebanese, half Norwegian. Right. So like my, I have a Lebanese family that migrated to Kentucky in the 1900s. And you can imagine what that was like, right. For them, yeah. they definitely have their fair share of stuff, but you know, they're good people and they worked hard and I'm really proud of them. And I'm really proud of that. They were able to give me a more privileged life growing up. Um, and so what I did when I was 16 is I cut it all off and I said, I'm going to go be my own person. Nobody's going to tell me I have to fit in like this. Cause I saw what the other side of the coin was like. So I I'd like to say as to be, I have an unreleased rant video. I almost put it on Twitter last night. I was really frustrated because I add, like when the, the problem is there's no accountability on the internet for when people go around and be dicks for no reason. There, it's, it's one thing to have different worldviews. And I, I've tried to do a better job of like surrounding myself with people that I value that are from a ton of different places because they challenge the way that I think. And I can become a better thinker by listening to these things and trying to understand them better and get a, getting a more holistic view on the world. And that's why I really appreciate seeing stuff like this. But my, my freaking chat, man, I, I was, I was so mad. I was like, guys, like, it's not like I, I'm science. I just want to play the game. Like if you guys have something bad to say about this or something like that, like please just be respectful and take it somewhere else. Like there's like, there's no reason to be doing this. You're like, I want to talk about the game. And the problem is there's just no accountability for the stuff that these people say. It, it comes, I like the cat. Um, it comes back around <laughs> to what we were talking about earlier about negativity on the internet in general. Like this is what happens when there's no accountability. Right. And, and it's just frustrating because I feel like, there's no harm in it, right? And it distracts everybody 
from what's actually important in like bringing people together, which is what gaming does. And that's why I think gaming is going to be the thing that revolutionizes the world because like movies are great, you know, and, and shows are great and I, I love them, but gaming special in that like, you get to live in that world, especially in Overwatch. You, again, there's a reason why it's the king because it does that better than anyone else. And it's frustrating to me to see, and, and this might come as a hot take to a lot of my, for my personality, to a lot of my YouTube audience. And I just say, I say how it is. I don't care. Okay. Just let people be people, man. Like how many times did I grow up in Kentucky at least? And everyone's always referring to like, oh, well, God, this, God, this, oh, we're going to pray for you to not, you know, like the pike flax and I'm trying to get right. And I grew up around a lot of that and it, it just frustrated me because I was like, you guys are some of the most like backwards people that I've met in my life where you're talking all this shit 24 seven. You're going to sit here. You're going to pray. No, you're not. You're going home and talk shit. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Um, so I, I wanted to separate myself from that, but I, I just wanted to say, I, I do appreciate and like hearing different perspectives and what they mean, because it makes me think and always takes me back to, I'm not going to say his name, because I don't know if it's my place to say his name or not, but yeah, you know who you are if you ever see, I doubt he ever sees the podcast, but you know, um, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's just nice to see that. And I just wish more people would be willing to see, to accept people for who they are, what they want to be. And, and instead of focusing so much on that and like my way has to be the way, like come together and have a meeting of the minds and look at what we can create. Like, look at how good the technology is in the world nowadays. Look at all the cool stuff from different backgrounds. Like that's like, we are at the turning point right now in human civilization. And we're going to sit here and be mad about this. And we can talk about like, I, I just wish more people were open to learning. I, I'm going on a rant. I'll, I'll stop. But no, but I can't really chime in too much on a, a lot of this because it's just, it's just not my wheelhouse. But I did SVP. I was I was this close to posting a rant video yesterday, being like, guys, please just shut the fuck up. Like I'm just <laughs> like, can we can we just not do it? But it, it's it's staying in the drafts for now. We'll see we'll see what happens because I'm gonna be doing the whole venture thing. You know, they're my hero. First time in four years, I'm gonna be grinding it. And if people care more about like causing problems than learning how to play the character, because I I'm gonna be I'm gonna be hitting high ranks on that character. I can promise you right now, I'm going to. They can get over it because it's just – is that really – with everything going on in the world, is that really what we're going to be so hung up on? Like let people be people. Like I, I don't know. Not my wheelhouse, but yeah. Sorry, I'm muted on my end. I was just saying that I really appreciate what Sam said. Sorry, I was muted on, on the podcast. I really appreciate what Sam said, and people of every background are important for, for this discussion and you know, for gaming to have a, a, a space where – it's another day in the office for characters of different backgrounds to be included. It requires everyone to chip in, and and Sam would be one of them. Free, is there anything you want to add? I, I kind of have my, you know, things that I want to add, but I I'm a, would love to hear yours first. Of course. Um, one thing, one thing I do want to interject with. I don't know if you have plans to talk about it, but I did want to address it because I find it really interesting. Um, is that some people have been saying that other heroes in the Overwatch cast have been misgendering Venture, and I think that that launches a really interesting question about um, language in general. And I have a lot of takes around that, so I want to touch on that later. But in reference to all the things that um, that Bones and Sam just said. I completely fucking agree. Yeah, it's just like, it's so frustrating because when somebody purposefully misgenders somebody, that is them saying like, you don't get to choose. And it's mm. a really contemptuous statement because it's like, how you were born is what you will always be. And that's a really sad way to fucking live. And I noticed that it's the same exact people who refuse to call Cass, Cass. <laughs> Bones, yes, Bones, you know, Bones knows. I tweeted that the other day. I'm like, it's always yeah. the same people, man. It's interesting how that is, right? Because it's it's not actually about the pronouns. It's not actually about the fact that, oh yeah, well, this isn't part of the English language. No, motherfucker, you're not being intellectually honest or emotionally honest with yourself in this discussion because your argument lacks integrity. Right? The entire the entire validity of it is torn apart the moment you realize that like singular they has been in the English has been in the English language words for for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. And the thing is with what was I gonna say? What was I gonna say after that? Um ranching, 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 <laughs> ranching, ranching. Oh my god, the ADHD you can, bullet train just left my brain. It's okay, oh you can take god. a moment. You can take a moment and feel free to chime in when you get it back. Is that all right? Or do you yes. want, are you is it coming? Is it coming? If it if it comes just let me know. That's phrasing, but I anyways. An, I have an add-on. I have an add-on that might help her remember. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I used to go by saying cuz like just the brief version without going into detail, like my sisters and I like we went through some shit in high school and it, it was really hard. 
Um, and what the, the how I ended up living my life by was this saying, you can't choose your heritage, but you can always choose your legacy. Right. And that was one of the most motivating things where you kind of kind of touched on that yeah. where it's like you're being told how to live. And that's kind of I was very stubborn. And I said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like I can't choose my heritage, but God damn it, I can choose my legacy. Right. And so I that was the big motivating factor into the chip that's been on my shoulder for about 10 years. I'm not sure if that helps you remember it all, but I I, I noticed that line and I, that's kind of where. Like, I'm trying to connect all the dots. I feel like Charlie, it's always sunny. You know, that meme where he's got like the bullets and board. And it's like, you know, so I'm, I'm all over the place, but I, I enjoy listening. Man, that's so beautiful. Back to you, that's, what we do. that's a beautiful. Yeah. Life. For you, any, any jogging, any memories? Or not yeah, yet? kind of, of just, um, when people say, oh no, it's, it's her, it's she, I'm just like, okay, that's not what you're actually saying. You're saying that you refuse to engage with this because it's not it's not worth your humanity to engage with this. You don't understand the, the values behind why somebody would want to identify this way. You don't understand why um, Cole Cassidy's name was changed to what it is, right? And you're saying that it's not worth your time to figure it out. And that's really, really fucking frustrating because the people who were hurt by the things that, that, that caused that name change that th th those were real people those had real consequences those were real victims and to brush it under the rug and be like i don't care it's a fake character it's just it's just dishonest yeah i think i think there's two facets of this that i want to speak on that i i hope will shed light for some people who don't get it because i think that's like the people i really want to speak to are the people who are open to understanding but are confused by the, by what's happening right because the people who aren't open is like there are lost calls and doesn't matter i think to the point yeah. of like the the linguistics and like the name change and all that it's like people are are like well the english language isn't isn't built this way and and, and the thing about that is you have to take a historical look at this right it's like the english language has changed so much so many times over so many years and we change so many things about our society because ultimately we decide that that's what's better for for more people, right? I think we can all agree that we want to create a place where like everyone is a free to be themselves and everyone feels relatively safe and happy. I don't think those are ideals that should conflict with anyone, no matter what your political allegiance may be. I'm pretty sure everyone feels like I want to make a better, nicer, safer world, right? And people have changed their language all the time. You know, 50 years ago, you would have been dropping racial slurs to refer to people of color, right? People like myself in the UK in the 80s would have been called Paki, right? They would have been called, just, just of being an Asian descent, it would have been referred to as a slur and it wouldn't even have been as seen as a slur. It would have been like, oh, that's just, that's what we call them. We call them darkies and we call them blackies. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, that's just how it is. Why are you creating such a thing about it? Why, why is it such a, it's, it's, I'm not being racist. It's just, it's just a term I use and it's just a language I grew up with. Why do I have to change? And it's like, we've, I, I, I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain to anyone why we've changed that, right? We've changed that because it's just flat out fucking racist and offensive. Yeah. And it's just not how people should be categorized in such these linear terms that are just clearly hurtful. They're clearly meant to be hurtful. And this person is telling you, this is a hurtful way to refer to me. And that brings you to two choices. A, double down and be like, no, 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 I'm right. I will continue to be hurtful. Or change what is ultimately in the grand scheme of things a really small thing. It's like a really small change. How many different scenarios are you going to have to like make this small change where you catch yourself a little bit? You're like, oh, whoop, not going to refer to them like that. I'll just refer to them like this, right? I'm pretty sure we've all come to the understanding of like, I'm not going to call my Indian friend Paki because that's fucking offensive. So I'm just going to call them by like a normal term. It's really a similar kind of effect here where it's like, it's totally okay to accidentally get it wrong. And I'm sure everyone at some point will accidentally get a pronoun wrong because it's just, it is ingrained into us growing up that like, oh, you must refer to something as he or she. And in some languages, I understand that it's even more difficult because the language itself is, is gendered and things have a gender and it's a little bit tricky. But I'm sure even in those contexts, there is a term that the queer community have come to and been like, please refer to us as this. And it's really, really easy to just be like, Oops, sorry, I said he, but what I meant was they. And I, I really hope that no one will jump down your throat for that, right? I'm pretty sure most reasonable people will not jump down your throat for being like, oh, sorry, I, I meant they, and, yep. and let's carry on, right? Like, it's, it's really easy to make that small shift. It may be a bit tricky to start with, but really mm. just think about the amount of effort that it requires. It's so minimal. It's so minimal. And here's the outcome of it. Here's why it's important. 
is that there's a whole group of people who you're now being welcoming to, who now know that you are a, someone they can trust, someone they can feel safe around, someone who will respect them, as opposed to the opposite, which is like, oh, this person is just going to be really hostile towards me, and I, I can't even be myself around them. I can't even trust them because this person is opposing just who I am for the sake of it, for the sake of some wider political issue. And this is the second point I wanted to get to before I, again, I would love to hear the rest of you guys' perspectives, is that it's not, it's not some wider political frontier that you think you're fighting. I think I saw this so much with the Cassidy name change, right? People still come in and they're like, oh, but uh, I don't ca I don't agree and it's I don't care what that guy did. I'm still going to call him Cree because, like, that's the name I got. It's like, first of all, it's a fictional fucking name. And if the devs decided to change it, it's a fucking you problem that you can't change along with it, right? The devs who made the game are like, we're calling him Cassidy now. I don't know what the fuck your problem is. But it's also not some wider political frontier that you're fighting. You think you're fighting some culture war. But really, all you're doing is showing the people around you that you're just a dick. Because it's it's like this culture wall is existing only in your mind. That it's like, oh, they're trying to take everything we value from. We take everything, blah, 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 blah. blah. They're taking it away. They're making me say Cassidy because they wanted me to go woke. Those people aren't seeing how you're behaving. The people who are seeing how you're behaving are the people around you. The people who are affected by the things that you're taking an obstinate stance against, right? And if we go to the venture example... If you're just like obstinately like I will call them he or she, the people around you who may be queer, who may be non-binary themselves, are just going to see that and going to be like, wow, I can't trust this guy. This guy's not my friend. Um, And it's like, is that the cost you really want to pay? Is like for this supposed culture war? Like all it's asking of you is be kind and accommodating. You don't need to draw this line in the sand that achieves nothing for anyone other than just make a more hostile world. Just make a better world. You don't need to make a more hostile world. Just take a simple, small change and make people's lives better. Uh, Bones, Afria, anything you guys want to chime in on what was discussed there? Uh, I think that what I'd like to speak to a little bit is the take that I can understand is a fairly... It, it, it comes across as... Um, fairly innocent when people say things like um i don't care what their gender is i play this shooter or this character for this like just because it's the character that i pick like i don't care about their gender and like that is a totally fine take to have um but i also think that it's worth recognizing that it does matter to people um you 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 can play whoever you want you can play venture because you you think that they are one of the better characters in the game you could play soldier 76 because he's queer or you know what i mean like you can play whatever character you want and that's like totally fine i think that it is also worth recognizing that people see themselves in these games through characters and they're allowed to be excited about that and by saying that it's like it doesn't matter just takes away a lot of the validity of a person's lived experience as like a minority group. Um, and you also can just shut the fuck up and not say that. You can continue to just play the characters that you're going to play. Um, you don't have to tell people it doesn't matter <laughs> because it matters to some people. Um, but also I, I do want to express like from the perspective of a queer person that a lot of people will get it wrong. And I think that we need to be like in a lot of ways like you know minority groups are infinitely fucking patient i'm gonna be honest um with the way that the world is but i think that we as a community um and as the overwatch community just like with with the addition of venture i think that we can all do our best to be accommodating of people who may be navigating this space for the first time and they're just like boy pronouns not my thing but i'll try my best i think that jumping down people's throats and like i saw something about people banning um folks in their chat uh for misgendering characters and whilst i can get behind um maybe that for the purpose of people who deliberately misgender characters just to be obnoxious um i understand that but i also think that people make mistakes and we we should you know um, give them the space to learn and maybe um, instead of like being quick to react to somebody getting it wrong um, start a conversation um, start a dialogue with people like talk about the community open up about your experiences and share why um, you know maybe 
uh, their perspective uh, can be harmful if it's not deliberately, like the intention isn't to harm. I understand that a lot of people's intention is not to harm people. It is simply people speaking from a place of um, less experience. Um, like Sam, for example, like, you know, you, you've said that this isn't your wheelhouse, but you have offered really valuable points to a conversation that is broader than just the, the queer community. You come from a space where it's like you're not necessarily part of that community, but your voice lends itself to that and makes the discussion broader. And it means that people like maybe in your audience who are also in the same space where it's just like they're not as you know comfortable or familiar around queer spaces. The fact that you have engaged in this conversation has maybe opened it up to them a little bit more. And so maybe they go away and they think, you know, oh, well, you know, I heard Sam talking on it and like he had good points to share. And, you know, it's just that the idea of like a bigger conversation where it's just like we want everybody to be involved. We, I know that, you know, people are so quick to hate on Alphabet Mafia representation. I say Alphabet Mafia, what I'm referencing is the LGBTQIA plus community. I call uh, it Alphabet Mafia just because, uh, yeah. I'm I was so confused. I'll be honest, keep going, I'm sorry. No, that's it. There's but so like, many but things that's it. going over my head today. Yeah, you know ahead. what though, but that's like, that's the thing. It's like, you would never know unless you kind of like sat down, had a chat and I was just like, you know, using all these phrases and stuff like that and throwing them around. It's just like, at the end of the day, we could all, do better just to be patient to listen to one another to give each other space to talk unless you're a bigot in which case get fucked <laughs> yeah absolutely it's, it's, <laughs> if, if, you're, if your intent is again it's like for there's a lot of people for whom this is a new frontier and that's totally yeah. understandable yeah. right for some people they've never encountered a queer person or never encountered anyone from the lgbtq plus community right they just like it's a, just a genuinely new thing and i i want to be clear that we should be completely open to those people and say hey look you know i get it you're confused you have questions you know this is this is new it's totally understandable that you'd be confused but while we should be open to those people, it's like if you're just maliciously trying to be a dick or again, you're just like obstinate. Yeah. It's quite clear, I think, when the pe when people are trying to be obstinate and not get it versus when they're innocently confused. And and it's, yeah, if you're the latter, if you're the former rather, you just, yeah, get fucked. Free yeah. anything you want to add. <laughs> There's this argument of like, oh, but venture isn't real and therefore what <laughs> does it matter that <laughs> that you use the wrong pronouns for her uh it, it just i think that that's interesting because what it shows people around you is that it shows these real and actual people that hey you're not willing to make the space for them to explore these personal freedoms and and the the life that they want to lead and the people they want to be and that can be really unsafe to some people because again with marginalized communities it's like i know this gets harped on quite a lot but they have it harder they statistically have life harder because they will be denied opportunities they will be denied um the connections that others have by default in some ways and it's it's important it's important to the real people how how a fictional character gets <laughs> referred to for this reason especially yeah can, can i go off a little bit I'm, I'm getting a little bit annoyed i don't normally read c comments when i'm when i'm <laughs> when i'm doing the podcast purely because the number of like no matter what we're talking about the number of moronic takes that fly by in any given podcast in the twitch chat in the comments makes me lose my mind and i've learned to, to tune them out but i think in this case is relevant it is because good. because they're um they're, they're the same thoughts that some people listening would be having. I think it's important to try and address them. It's like, it's a video game character. Why does it matter so much? Motherfucker, you're here in a live stream spending your time listening to a podcast about the balance of a video game character. You clearly care. You clearly care about the video game character. You just don't care when it's talking about some sort of representation of a minority group. This bizarre argument of like, it's a video game character. Why do you care? Bro, you're fucking here. You clearly care. So first of all, you care. Because you fucking gave your time and money to Overwatch and Overwatch content creators, right? You fucking went to a job. Motherfucker went to the fucking 9 to 5 in the office, put on a suit and tie, earned their money, came back, spent it on a fucking battle pass. You care, my guy. You fucking care. So that's first and foremost. 
Secondly, it's really simple as like a desire to just want to see people like yourself in the media in which you consume and everybody fucking understands this because that's the whole fucking point of movies and television and TV shows is that you like to see stories that make you think about your own life or make you relate to the world in which you live. That's If you think about the, the favorite TV show or movie you ever saw, it's probably because it made you feel something. You're like, oh, it, it really made me think about life or the people I care about or what, the kind of person I want to be. That's what the media we consume does for us. It, it makes you see a, an image of yourself in what you consume, whether that's directly in that they look like me, they share the background as me, or they're the kind of person that I am or they're the kind of person I want to be. So it's a really small desire for people to just be like, I want to see someone with my background in, in movies and television and video games that I consume. And if that's not an instinct you have, it's probably because you're already over-fucking represented in the media you consume. It's probably because there's a million fucking straight white dudes in media that you consume. And that doesn't make you a villain. That doesn't make straight white men the villain of the piece. It doesn't mean that you're somehow a bad guy for being overrepresented. It just means that you already got that thing that other people are seeking. Why are you denying it to them? Why are you, like, stopping them from having that? An example I always think of is like it's not it's not always a big thing. It's not always something that changes your life. But for me, as someone who's a, an immigrant in the country in which I live in, and my parents were the first generation, and I kind of moved it at the age of 11. I always think about the show Master of None that I, I watched um, a couple years ago. It's a great show. Um, and in the show, I think one of the early episodes, it's, it's a, the main characters of, of Indian origin as well. He's born in the USA, but his parents are Indian and they emigrated. And like the second episode, I think, is about him and his friend who's also, I think his parents are from Hong Kong. So he's also the child of an immigrant family. And the whole episode is them talking about how basically they're, they've become distanced and di ungrateful to their parents and the struggles their parents have because their parents keep annoying them with dumb shit like, hey, my iPad won't work. Can you fix my iPad? Hey, like, you know, like, you know, classic boomery parent stuff where it's like, can you fix this for me? Um, and you're like, oh, I don't have the time right now, dad. I've got to go out with my friends. See you later. And then they're kind of, they kind of have this attitude towards their parents where they're a bit like, oh my God, aren't our parents cringe? And then they start talking about it and they're like, what, what was your dad's background actually? And they kind of come to these realizations of like, damn, my dad was like, grew up in like this really dirt poor village and he moved to the US and like he had no friends, he had no family, he's all on his own. There's a hostile environment of people who are just like being racist to them and like back in the 60s or whatever. And like they had to go through all that struggle, live, you know, paycheck to paycheck, like barely feeding themselves. And they did all that to come here and put us in this privileged position where we have like our video games and our iPads and we don't even fucking understand the absolute pain and misery they went through and the struggle, right? And we can't even relate to the worlds that they've come from. And we, we should be understanding of the, the privilege that we have and the, you know, the position that they came from. And as they go through this realization, they then take their parents out and they're like, we want to hear your stories, guys. We want to know where you came from. And I remember watching that episode and, and like, I was like, wow, I, I've never seen a TV show about an immigrant like experience like I've never I've never actually been in, so watch a TV show where the characters like if you watch like it's like a it's sort of like a sitcom right so it's like if you watch a sitcom I never would watch friends and expect to hear a story about like the struggles of an immigrant family and friends and so my mind never even thought to consider this is a story that would be told and it wasn't even a conception that's something that might in encounter on my television screens and then I watched it and I was like that's that's my experience. Like I I have this feeling a lot too, where like I sometimes forget the struggles that my parents went through to get here, and like the different culture shift that they have, that they've have to deal with and they're adapting to. And sometimes my frustrations that they don't understand the pronunciation of this word or they do this thing wrong is like an indicator of their cultural struggle. And it's just simple things like that that is the reason why representation is important. It's just a reminder that like oh that that's my story. And I can come away with something from it. I can learn something from it. And I can reflect on my own life. And it doesn't always have to be why you watch TV or movies. And it doesn't always have to be why you play video games. You know, so much of the movies and TVs and video games I consume have nothing to do with my everyday experience. And I enjoy them regardless. But sometimes it's nice to reflect on your, on your life and come to some epiphany based off of the things you see. And, and that's all it is. That's all it is that people want. They just want someone to be like, oh... That's my experience. That's that's the things that I go through and that's the, the things that I've experienced and the things that I think. And, oh, okay, it's nice to know that, like, other people have gone through the same thing because isn't that what the fuck we do with life? We're always like, I want to... It's nice to know that other people are going going through it, too. And Listen, that's, like, I... Yeah, that's it. That's my rat. <laughs> good rat, good rat. 
Listen, I loved getting to see what life is like for a disgraced high school science teacher who has to turn to making meth and the world of being a drug lord to regain some control of his life and the subsequent events that follow. Great fun. <laughs> but also, I love seeing stories like Everything Everywhere All at Once, right? That was, to me, what, what um, like you said, Master of None was like for you of getting to see this representation of the Indian immigrant experience. For me, it was like the Chinese immigrant experience and seeing this um, tackling of these family dynamics where you have a really, really controlling parent and you have this like world of pressure on your shoulders. And I cried so many times in that in that film because it just hit on these shared experiences so much. And that's important. That's what stories are for. Yeah. What was the name of that show, SVB? Master of None. Okay. Send, send that. that. That literally sounds like my grandpa's life. Like, youngest of 11, came to the United States, founded the clothing store. Whitesburg, Kentucky, coal mine Kentucky, ended up going to Harvard. And then he got into Harvard Business School because he was shining the shoes he worked he was getting paid nothing shining the shoes and always took on the difficult customers right because that's like what he was raised doing and the guy whose shoe that never fit was the dean of admissions at harvard business and that is how he got in so one of the big chips in my life and my shoulders is like you know I, if he can do it organically i'm gonna cut myself off i'm gonna do it myself i want to prove to him that i could be like him you know so i i'd love i'd love to see that story and shout out to jid though rest in peace you know what a guy what a guy that's beautiful, and that that's again a beautiful story, and that's why we seek these in our in the things we consume. Not always, as 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 Priya elaborated, it's not always what we're doing all the time. But hey, sometimes, right? Because how many fucking non-binary characters are there? There ain't. So it's like nice for sometimes that to be the thing. Uh, Bones, anything you want to add before we actually maybe talk about the gameplay adventure? Yeah, I I just I I would like to say that um, just like. Just a just a quick little insert here that I appreciate that this podcast typically uh, surrounds things like the gameplay and um, the way that the game uh, is like changing and evolving and just like from a player perspective, like that's usually kind of where you you come at this from. Um, but I just want to say thank you to being open uh, to having a discussion uh, about like, uh, you know, queerness and like the way that the game feels for like a player base beyond like the gameplay aspect of it. Um, because I know it's a hard conversation to have. And I know that a lot, a lot of the time um, people are quick to act negatively, uh, react negatively to conversations like this when they think that this space is for um, something else specifically relating to like gameplay. So um, thanks for having the, the chat about um, uh, uh, all the stuff. And um, thanks to everybody who listened. Um, uh, yay, be gay, uh, do crimes, eat rocks. Yeah, not at all something that de deserves a thanks, but I think that people, like, if you're sitting here and you're like, oh my god, just get to the gameplay section already. It's like, bro, how yeah. many fucking places can you just watch Venture gameplay? Can you can hear people talking their thoughts on Venture? Yeah. Like, on any of these things, we, we do this podcast probably, like, once every other week, and we spend hours and hours talking about the gameplay we're watching. How bad is it that if, like, for 45 minutes, we for one time talked about some other wider issue? Like, calm the fuck on, guys. If that's, like, your tolerance, you can't even take that. My guy, you're just, you know, you're, you're kind of outing yourself yeah. there. Like, just, just, just a <laughs> little bit. We'll talk about the gameplay, but just, just that, that section's important, too. This is the first fucking yeah. non-binary character. Like, we need that section. <laughs> We need that fucking section. Um, okay. Anything else you guys want to add before we do move on to the gameplay? I do have a thing about the the languages I want to talk about. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so a lot of people were getting up in arms about, uh, for instance, Anna misgendering or Venture as she nanos them. And it is it is interesting to me because... I think that this is a unique challenge. Like we were saying earlier, English is a language that is constantly evolving and it's something that will take iteration and it's very fluid. Language is extremely fluid. And I think since the age of the internet, since the age of information we find ourselves in, um, this cycle is going to get ever faster. And now the problem is a lot of languages out there are gendered. 
naturally, right? A lot of Germanic languages, but also languages like Mandarin, for instance. Um, in French and Mandarin both, when you speak of either, when you speak of they, them, it always defaults to the masculine version. So let me give you an example. If you're talking to, if you're saying he, it's il. If you say she, elle. But then if it's multiple people, a mix of, of people, or a singular they, it's always il again, right? So it defaults masculine. And Mandarin does the exact same thing. It all sounds the same in terms of like ta, right? Uh, if you're saying, oh, they're eating, it's ta, 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 But it looks different, but it sounds the same. And again, it defaults masculine. And a bunch of languages like um, like Tagalog, for instance, aren't gendered at all, at all. So they have these umbrella terms for whenever you're referring to royalty or uh, leaders or to people's titles. And so it's a really, really unique challenge for them to figure out how to um, morph voice lines in different languages in reference to a character whose identity is still something that is burgeoning culturally as well as in terms of all the languages that exist in the world. So I think that I could be wrong, but I think that I heard Ventures VA uh, say that they made a conscious choice to lean masculine uh, whenever they're in that bind of, okay, which one do we use? Because a lot of languages don't have a set in stone they. Right, they, a lot of them just don't. A lot of them have a they, but it's masculine leaning. A lot of them uh, simply are not gendered at all. So it's just, it's it's a mess. <laughs> it's hard, but I think we need to give them grace because this is something that uh, is going to change and is going to need iteration. But it's it's very fluid, and I think it's really interesting. So yeah, yeah, that is very interesting, and it, it is a new frontier for us to like. We can come to that solution, right? As you said, language evolves and it's a new frontier and we can figure out a way to make it work. I don't think it's like a... I never I never get the argument of like, we've been doing it this way, we'll keep doing it. We used to poop thou, in the street. Thou do not understandeth Shakespeare English from like, you know what I'm saying? Like, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's like, it's yeah, do you, you talk in ye old English? No, you don't. We change that too. It's like, we change, we just change so many things about society, right? It's just like, we used to poop in the street, bro. We don't do that anymore. So like, we, we figured out that was a bad thing to do. So let's stop Speak doing that. Yourself. That's true. I live in Australia. Actually, I mean, actually, you guys drink we, from we shoes. In houses in so. Kentucky, okay? Uh, you listen, honestly, the Australian shoeys are kind of interesting. I, 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 I've no, never done one. No, no, no. Shoey time? Shoey time? This is, no. Uh, no this is, I this is one place. Room, but I don't think is, I have a shoe that I want to drink from. No. Sure? This is the one place I condone the xenophobia. Shoey? No to Australian shoeys. No. No. Prevent this from Man. catching on as a culture. Man. Me, you're just a hater. I am That's a hater. Rough. I absolutely hate <laughs> Chewies, I will not lie. I will. The the uh, the upset me on a deep level. So do you guys use Chewies like? Do you guys use like clean, like brand new shoes, or is it like no? Shoe? I was using. Sorry to derail, but I do charity streams and I do shoeies as like a like a bit thing for it. And I used a shoe that was my doorstop at my front door for two years. It had spiders. I'd worn that thing to multiple concerts. It was. I am gross. I need people to know that. But yeah, that's like the the appeal is you take your shoe off that you're wearing and you get a beer and you pour it in. You go blah, 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 blah. You know, I, I'm not going to judge that because I have seen worse in bars in Ohio and <laughs> Kentucky. So I have no, like the stuff that you see, I just, you know what? Good for you. Because I, I can promise you. you I've seen worse. Let As me live my truth. That's bad? <laughs> you think that's bad, buddy? Come to Kentucky and we'll, 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 we'll take you out to Appalachia country and then you'll see real quick. All right. So. You know, anyway, moving on. I mean, I mean, I'm British. So if there's anything about alcoholism that can be taught to the world, it was done by us. So I, I seen it. <laughs> I seen it, but. Real. Real. I, I am never doing a shoey chat. That's never becoming a subathon goal, okay? Just get it through your head. No for happening. Would you do it for charity? Would you do it for charity? Oh, don't pull the charity card on me, bro. Uh, listen, don't be I have like, a charity, for charity tomorrow, so I'm considering it now. Like, yeah, that might be something I need to do. You I'm, better I'm break the bank. I'm going to end up with a mustache tomorrow, just so you know. And people are trying to get me to. Would you guys meow for charity? This is an honest question. Before yeah. we move on to gameplay, would I meow uh, for I'm charity? Right now. I'll meow. Shouldn't have been that quick to say it, huh? Uh, it's, 
I'm gonna get gaslit by my chat if I if I yeah. I don't. Well, so they've been trying to get. Regardless, moving on. I, I, yeah. I want to see a I want to see a Samito clip. Like, there's a really funny ML7 clip of him being like, "Mommy, mommy," and I I want to see I want to see a Samito clip of just you meowing. That's like out of context, Samito. Dude, because like people are already making like AI things to me saying stuff. Lord knows what they would do with me actually saying something. So you know, I'm trying to be careful here. You know? Yeah, probably for we'll the best. See. Probably for the best. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. When well, people now- say. Yeah, oh. go ahead, Freya. When when people say, "Oh my God, this is how we've always done things," I'm just like, "You're fucking stupid." Do you know what we did? Not just not even a hundred years ago, we inserted maggots into people because we thought it would cure diseases. We had <laughs> doctors literally fingering women because it would cure them of their hy- hysteria. hysteria. We did a we did a lot of shitty things. We used to use the internal organs of of animals as condoms, like. I don't think you want to go back to that. I don't yeah. think you want a cow bladder. We can do better. We can do better. <laughs> we can do better. Always yeah. improving. <laughs> oh, you got ghosts in your blood? You should do cocaine about it. It's like, bro. <laughs> There's <laughs> cocaine in Coca-Cola. Let's not forget that. Exactly. Let's not forget that. There actually and was. They, oh my god. And, and okay, we're, we're going on a tangent, but like they used... They, when, when soldiers had crippling addictions to morphine after World War One, do you know what some of, some doctors gave them to treat this? They gave them heroin. Right. <laughs> we don't want to go back to the past. Six. The past fucking Six. sucks. This is why we can just stick to bourbon and call it there. <laughs> uh, Kentucky <laughs> bias. Kentucky bias, I admit. But, real, know, real. Kentucky bias. Okay, well, after that, that vast discussion... <laughs> Let's actually talk about Venture Overwatch. So, the gameplay of our new mining hero. Samito, talk to me first. Talk me through what do you Let's do it, think Sam. about Venture's gameplay? Uh, a subject matter I can contribute value input on. Here we go. Okay. So, super intriguing, right? Like, character is very... Very, very high skill floor, in my opinion. Like, I know, I know the shots, like, are kind of like J. Sil junk rat shots, you know, a little bit, like, yeah, a little. But aside from that, like, positioning is by far the most important thing. And it's a little bit like Brig, too, where you talk about and D- DPS Doom, where, you know, it's a, it, you feel like it's a close range character. You want to go in with your drill and you want to drill people. But really, what's important is using the drill for spacing, right? Getting, getting to those angles I talked to you about, SVB, you know, like the forcing two angles. You want to make a war on two fronts. You can get away with so much more, like different spacing opportunities. You can engage on BAP windows like you could with Doomfist Slam. And what's so cool about the character are the variety of options. Like there's not just a set, like Orissa, for example. Every single gameplay loop you have, spear for, or spin first, fortify second, spear again. Couple bit, little bit of downtime, back off, same thing, rinse, repeat, right? If you mess up that CD cycle while well, you're playing, you're just playing Arista straight up wrong, right? But Venture, depending on the situation and what gets used first, you can do a variety of different cycles and combos to try to set up like high value engages, high value angles. It completely depends on the map and the comp you're playing against, right? And it's been a long time since there's been a DPS hero that's like that. Right, really, it's Echo. It's really been well. I guess that was the last DPS hero that came out f- before Sojourn, because Sojourn's all about building the rail and stuff. But it's a v- very, very big brain gameplay loop, right? And so you have to really be thinking a lot about what you're doing when you when you go in, and it, and I love that, and I love that so much because again, that means that there's going to be a much higher ceiling that you know I, I'm going to hit it. Like I'm telling you right now, like I'm going to be no life in this character, and I'm really, really excited about it. Um, so it's a, a really great gameplay loop. I'm not sure what they should do to it yet. I think we need more time before. We decide. All right, let's let's tweak them or them. Um, can I say? Can I say apostrophe? Because I use Kentucky slang. I say y'all all the time too. Can we do? If I say apostrophe em, is that cool? And cut out like the th. Would people be mad about that? Because it kind of sounds like him, but it's not what I'm saying. I'm saying anyway, whatever. I'll, 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 I'll figure it out. Um, um, what was I saying? Oh, oh yeah, the gameplay move. Yeah. So it's. I think it's good, and I I, I wouldn't touch the CDs yet. I would wait and see. Um, how things play out. Ult. Super strong, big combos with the ult. I love the ultimate. It's got a, 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 a tighter cone than you might think, but a lot of big setups. It, it is a little hard to set up because you it's it's risky to aggress on the off angles because you kind of have to use both of your cooldowns to do it, and you'll have dive time or downtime. So you need some other people on your team to engage and put a little bit into you like the old DPS doing this style. But it's pretty dang fun. And I'm not gonna lie, SBB though. One thing to be nervous about if you're the developers, Echo absolutely floors this character, and it is the best copy in the game up there with Tracer. Like I, I have clips of me copying people as Echo. I guess their pick rates for the road too. Copying a, a, a Venture as Echo, and I will just 5k. Like it's it's gross. It is so gross, but it's fun, and I'm I'm here for it. 
I mean, I love the passion. I love the enthusiasm. I look forward to the Semido unranked GM venture just to like, you no, know. I'm just starting out strong with it. I'm just going to start out. We're going we're going high rank placements to 50 wins. Sure thing. I, I, I look forward to what you cook with it. Freya, what about yourself as another fellow original projectile DPS player? How have you found oh Ventures God. gameplay? They're so dynamic. I mean, Sam, we've we've conquered the skies, right? Yes. Now, now we gotta conquer the underground. <laughs> <laughs> now we gotta go for rock and stone. Yeah. Oh my God, I hope I I fucking hope they have a deep rock galactic reference in their voice lines. That would that would rule. Um, but. I think they're really fun and dynamic. I think they open up a ton of situations because I feel like, um, again, it's kind of like Doomfist in that you have options and that the high skill floor and hopefully high skill ceiling, I, I have comments about that, but um, the high skill floor in general, it just, it comes from player choice and uh, understanding the game and reading it well and making careful decisions and learning from it. And I feel like that's a really, really important thing. And I'm so glad we have that in a hero after Malga, which was, oh my God, the complete opposite of that. <laughs> and so, yeah, no, I'm, I'm so excited to drill people from behind and push them into my backline. Hey, yo. Yeah, hey, yo, that's phrasing right there. Hey, yo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Drilling from all right, okay. Um, Bones, how have you found the venture gameplay? Have you have you had a chance to play much of them? I haven't played much of uh, venture in um, so I've only just uh just been mucking around in quick play with them. Um, I haven't played much as venture, but from what I've seen as people using the character, I am blown away by the the their ability to just position themselves on a map, like. Venture can take high ground in a second, and I'm just like, it, I don't know, their their movement feels really different, really dynamic, like uh, Fariha mentioned. I feel like they are, they, they're hard to kind of like track at the moment. Like, um, I'm playing from, so for anybody uh, who's wondering, I main support characters. I'm typically, uh, I'm a big fan of Lucio. Um, but uh, running around with a venture as a support has been really interesting because they can position position themselves on a map in really interesting ways. And I was just like, I was playing a game and I watched a venture go from being uh, the bottom of the bottom, literally underground, to taking height and immediately like controlling the scene from that. And uh, I haven't played much of them from, but from what I've seen, they're just like. They're really fun and they're really interesting, and I think that it's nice to have a, a refreshing um, character play style. Like um, it feels, it feels very different to a lot of the uh, the DPS characters that I very rarely play. I play a lot of Junkrat. Nobody judge me, um, but yeah, they just. I I'm really interested to see how they kind of fit in a team dynamic when um when people start playing them competitively like i'm really interested to see what they bring to a team dynamic from that perspective but as like a casual just like you know fluffing around gamer uh they're really fun and uh, i like when they uh jump big and do alt yeah <laughs> i'm interested about the um alt combos as well that i've been seeing um that's what i really i quite like to learn about is uh which heroes synergize which with other heroes and i've been seeing some fun like alt combos with like uh grav and um ilari's alt as well and then a venture alt on top of that i'm just like this is kind of this is kind of dirty like i'm really excited about that i love when those plays sync up and i'm really interested to see how this character kind of like influences play styles of people because i think they'll change in a lot of ways you'll have to because they're just so mobile and like different and it's really cool yeah, in many ways, this is like the most fun time of a hero release is that we were just getting introduced to the hero and everyone's still figuring out the hero. It's going to get like, you know, in, if history's any judge, it's going to get boring in, in like two weeks when everyone's like, this is exactly how you play venture. And like, you know, they, they should always do this and they should always be playing like that. And then it's like, that's when you start to get a little bit tired. So I actually really love the, mm. the this era of, of when a hero comes out and everyone's like, yeah. oh, you could do this and you could do that. And like, you know, stuff like you mentioned there, like, you know, ulting into a grab is like so much fun and it's so much what people nostalgize about 
or watch one where they're like, I remember graphs and dropping dragons and shatters yeah. and blades into the graph. And it's like, then we then we got to the point where we're like, actually, that's suboptimal. You should just yeah. only throw your cooldowns into the graph and then cycle your next ultimate for the uh, once the graph is done. And it's like, uh, I just want to throw yeah. shit in the, into a wall and see what like blows up. And that's kind of like mm. what what the stage we're at right now. And yeah, I, I um. I haven't gotten to play them too much because the the queue times yesterday I was like oh man I'm uh, I'm not sitting through these oh my god I'm not sitting through these queue times but I I did get to play a, a decent amount of them in when we were in Irvine and Freya was there too and and th- that was really fun honestly it was like I mean pugs are always fun and I encourage people if you can to play pugs they they do some in my server if you want to join um but like it's always fun to have like those coordinated environments I think Sam you were stacking a lot as well and that's that's always where it's most fun to see what you can do with the hero what right. I like about Venture is that it it's kind of like it's not the same boring loop that we get with a lot of hit scan heroes, right? And I know that I'm spe- preaching to the choir here because oh, I got two. So I got projectile lovers in the call with me. But what I mean by that is that with with the design of heroes, right? We, we, there's only so many ways to have hit scans, right? It's like okay, the gun shoots like this, and the gun shoots like that. But it's like at the end of the day, it's a hit scan weapon. Whereas there's always a lot more that can be done with something like this, where it's like, oh, there's there's like a drill element, but there's also the projectile of the shot. It's kind of like a Sigma shot, but kind of like different. And so I'm always looking forward to these kind of hero releases and constructions of Overwatch where there's there's like a bigger scope and change. You know, again, it's great that we have someone who goes underground now. Like, that's that's fun. And I think it's not, you know, we're not digging tunnels and pathways yet. Maybe that's coming. Maybe that the next hero after that will be like... A symmetric teleport, but under the ground and coming out somewhere else. <laughs> Underground railroad maker. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that like stuff like that. But it's it's fun to have like these new fresh dynamics that like I just want to yeah I want to see people do cool stuff with it, and I want that fresh feeling of when people are like oh my god I just did a a really cool thing with venture which you know in my mind is a little bit less exciting than like I mean it's still cool when you're widowmaker and you shoot three people in the head but it's like yeah we, we kind of seen that though right we we know what that works yeah. but it's like the the combos and Chest stuff are... the checkers is what we'll say Chest yeah. The checkers. yeah sam Chad you wanted to say something players. go ahead yeah i got stuck on, under the payload a couple times and then a life weaver treed me and it forced me out of my jump right i've seen that yeah i got trolled what? so hard i got trolled so hard but the one thing i wanted to add us to be is i'm actually not sure if there's going to be a one dimensional way to play venture I'm not sold on that. I think there's, I think the map dynamic is so important to how you can set up on corners and how you can get around. Like there's a clip of me. I went Michael Phelps on a widow player earlier on Midtown. I drilled over the train and then slammed. Like literally, looked like I was diving straight in right on the widow as they got naded. Pop right back up. Ton of damage. Like you can't. I can't even do that on Echo because you can't. You have to like kind of bait and engage. You have to play in the Goldilocks zone as Echo, where it's like you're not too close, not too far, reading what like the mm-hmm. cooldowns are going on the fight, and then make a split second decision. Oh. But on Venture, I'm in there, <laughs> like, and that's kind of yeah. what DPS Doom was like. And there's so many decisions that you can make, like debating. You know, it's it's mind games, and I I, I love it. So I wouldn't be sold on like a one dimensional style of play. I think that Venture might be a breath of fresh air to even that kind of gameplay loop. So it'll be fun. I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. That does sound fun. I mean, uh, we'll wait and see. I, I hope not. I hope that you're correct, Sam. And you know, you you would know. You you played a lot, but you know, I'm always I'm always saddened, and it's the inevitable way. But I'm always saddened when a hero gets figured out, and we're kind of like, yeah, okay, this is just how you play the hero now. But Freya, how about how about you? Where do you see Venture fitting into the to the wider scope of the Overwatch, you know, metas and and compositions and stuff? Oh man, I feel like they get outranged. I feel like they fit in Brawl right now, is my impression. Um, I I don't know if it was just my first couple of games with them, but I kind of want them to have either faster cooldowns or, like, a third cooldown. I want to be drilling people off of cooldown, man. Like, I just... <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of downtime where you are extremely vulnerable and exposed, and by virtue of you being so close to them and having only a small... I guess it's it's a pretty big stun with the the drill dash, if you're using that on someone. But it's not like Doomfist when he was a DPS, where you could go in and the stuns were so pivotal. You would be moving people around, you would have a ton of mobility yourself, and you had that option uh, between the, the slam, the uppercut, and the actual punch. And that gave you a ton of just toys. I feel that Venture has less of that, just by virtue of them either having the dash to engage or the dash to uh, disengage or or like vice versa with the 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 digging part 
the 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 diggy diggy hole cooldown does not feel as good to like disengage with though because again you get rewarded for popping out right charging that launch but also it's just slow i think that was intentional but it just it limits your options yeah it's I don't so know easy I... to feed on them <laughs> right it's really weird when 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 the trailer launched people were like oh my god not another immortality and i'm like guys this is like a worse wraith form like you just you Which can die that? while you're anim like in the animation in many ways, though, I don't know if I'm biased because I was like, towards the end of Overwatch One. Whenever I did play DPS, I was like a Reaper one trick. So I feel like I, Adventure suffers a lot by the same problems, where it's like you just kind of lo on certain maps you just lose to the hit scan pressure of like just shooting you from from like a farther range, and it's like really like either you're burning your cooldowns to get in, in which case like it's a problem, or your and then, and then that, that with venture also affects your time to kill, right? Because that, that's always the problem when you're dueling. Is it like as a DPS you need to have the ability to kill the other DPS faster than they kill you, right? Or, like, at least more consistently. Otherwise, you're just at a disadvantage constantly. And if you're using your cooldowns to go in, well, I can't then, like, primary drill them. And, like, I'm losing the time to kill, and maybe they'll kill me faster. I'm sure, Sam, you have thoughts on this, but it felt to me like it's that same problem. Like, if it's a if it's a map where they're set up somewhere and I can't get there, it's going to be, like, really hard. Those. Right. It's easier to defend where you can just start on the angle. And the, and the, the other thing, I agree, I, I felt like there might need to be a third ability... But I think the developers think the third ability is the melee, and it's a little clunky. It's a little clunky, because it is extra melee damage, but, like, the setups for that character are just going to be so important. And we'll, I, I wanted to say that for you, but I wasn't sure, so I'm, I'm glad that you brought it up, because I, I, I still want to wait and see, but you all have more hours on Venture than I do. So I think I have maybe, like, five or six, but we'll, we'll see. I'm going to keep playing, and we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, it's definitely. Also what you said ahead, about the, the range of, like, sometimes... The, the games I struggle with on Fara too, are the ones where I can't close that gap. And it's like, it's not just a 20 or 30 meter gap. I'm talking when like the hit scans are like 60, 70 meters out. And that's all they're doing. It's like, they're not even being effective on the front line in any degree. It's just, they're keeping that distance. And so you can't really reach them. And I feel like Venture will have that same struggle of like, if you have a tank diff or like your tank's a hog and you can't really walk in because there's just yes. it in, it, you're going to be really, really struggling on Venture. You can't do anything in that situation. Yeah. You're just going to mel melt it. Bones, I know this is like, you know, you're like, oh, I don't give a shit about any of this. Like, these guys are maxing the, <laughs> no. the balance. But what, what is your kind of perspective on just how you've seen or what you think is going to happen for, for, for maybe games like yours? No, I, it, it's definitely not that I don't care. It is, um, it is more that uh, you folks speak at a level that I don't play at. And so um, a lot of the concerns that you have about things like, um, you know, uh, abilities being on cooldown and like, I understand like, there's the cat. Um, mm -hmm. I understand like why those kinds of things are like baiting into, uh, baiting heroes into using abilities and getting them on cooldown is how you get picks. Basically that's like, you make it so that they don't have any way of like escaping or like cleansing or anything like that. That's how that works. Um, and so when I think, uh, I think when you guys speak to that sort of thing, it goes over my head a little bit just because I'm a frantic little quick play gremlin and I'm just going to run around and I'm just, you know, I'm going to play um, out of position constantly. The amount of times that you'll see me playing as Ana in the front line running at a tank is just unhinged amounts. Um, and so from what I've kind of like experienced it in my game so far and what I think that um, is likely to happen at like lower levels in like play style is that people aren't going to be as concerned about those kinds of things. They're just going to assume it's like, well, my, my, all of my stuff is on cooldown as venture. I guess I'm just going to get wiped. And I think that's what we'll kind of most likely see. Um, but I, I'm just like, I don't know. Like I said, I think that their play style is really unique. And, um, again, like, uh, Sam mentioned, it's it's all about like positioning yourself um and uh so far what i've seen is uh ventures just running up to a tank and they're like hey i'm gonna eat you and there's nothing you can do about it and the tanks like oh boy that is a thing that is gonna happen um and that's how i've seen them played so far which is kind of cool um i've seen the the damage scores that i've seen on ventures as well oh my gosh i i don't know i guess it's a lot apparently they do a lot of damage and i don't know where that comes from necessarily like their um their primary fire doesn't like it doesn't seem to have a lot of range so um 
I'm just wondering how people amass like so much damage from them. Like, cause I'm, I don't know where the damage output comes from necessarily, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's interesting. I, I think your cat certainly has a lot of opinions on venture and maybe we need I'm to pull so them up. Sorry. No, no, I actually no, love it. I love it. Fun. It's actually it's fun. cute. It's, it's great. It's just hearing your, your, you've got a point and your cat is like, meow, I disagree what, with what, that. What's, the, what's her name? <laughs> Her name is Lily. She's a 12-year-old Tonkinese. So she's a Siamese-Burmese mix. Hold on, I'll show you. I know that this okay. is like off topic, I, but... I, I don't know what that means, but I like your cat. Yeah, I like cats. <laughs> I don't, I don't, a baby. I don't understand the, the <laughs> breeds, oh, the but I like cat. Blue. Cute cat. That's cool. Oh, hey, podcast oh, audio listeners, you're missing out on a cute cat. So oh. make sure... Make I'm sure sorry. You're that's why, and that's why you watch it on YouTube. Exactly. That's there why. You that's why you give me the YouTube ad revenue by yeah, watching yeah, and leaving it running. That's what we're talking about. That little so you one leave it running. Right you leave it running. Oh, that's uh, funny. And then you get to watch that's cute funny. cats. But yeah, Sam. Maybe yeah. you want, maybe you have some uh, yeah. insight into the yeah. damage. The advice I would give to everybody is: yeah, do not play the player. Play the map. Right. And that's the big thing I've been telling to everybody else about. And that's the same thing for Echo, same thing for Farah. Like, you know, you need to play the map to set yourself up to get that poke damage. And the big damage really comes from getting those big dig outs where you'll do like a hundred damage. Yeah. Like, and it's a, it's a quick charge, but you, then you can just drill to the high ground and just do, 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 do. Like, you know, on the high ground, it's like mm. you're like a balloon tower defense turret kind of. And actually, I think they kind of shoot little, little. What, 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 what does Venture shoot out? What, I don't even know what they are. What, 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 like little, little rocks, explosive probably. rocks. Is that the like explosive rocks? Is, is that. I, Whatever it may be, I guess there's a lot of sweeping maybe? around Petra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know, but um, they're cool. Play the map. Don't play the player, right? If they, I don't care if the player's right there and you want to dig out on them. Go take an angle, shoot them for a little bit, get your first setup, and then after you get your first setup, then you can go play the player, um, if that makes any sense at all. That might not make any no, sense. No, it I have does. To get it, I, have, I have to get it, like, on, a, on an actual guy, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. No, yeah, I mean, that's it. that's interesting to hear from a perspective of, of somebody who plays at a, like a lower level or like much more casual. Um, I think that's something that uh, we we fall into the we fall into the pitfall of uh, everybody uh, just run at the person and maybe they'll die. Um, and I think it's nice to hear like things like advice like play the map is you know not necessarily something that I'm thinking about when I'm it, it's 3 a.m. and I'm quick play and I'm like <laughs> 15 losses in and I'm like bro I'm gonna go Lucio and I'm just gonna I mean, it's, that's it um, so I'm I, I'm really excited to to see things like guides on you know hey how do you not necessarily play the character but like how can you really capitalize on playing as this character um, and that's what I like. I like the exploration of that. And I love the work that goes into that from like a higher level of gameplay. Like people are thinking on a different scale. Um, and a little on me sitting in my room at, t at 3 AM with the TikTok open being like, all right, I had a Fariha and Sam and SVB say to play this character again. I got I should actually listen to that. I should do that. <laughs> well, your first mistake is taking any advice from TikTok because that shit is fucking... <laughs> That shit is the uh, worst. Man. Gavin real, Winter, real. By the, Gavin Winter uh, from the dev team, by the way, says it's, they're explosive charges for digging. He thinks. Thank you, Gavin. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what happens if Gavin's wrong? Well, he gets fired. <laughs> Sorry, Gavin. Your your your, <laughs> your job's on this. Oh God. Yeah. Any other thoughts on the gameplay element for you? Maybe anything you want to add on on the gameplay of oh, venture? Oh, dude. Okay. 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 The 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 the, the animators and the VFX VX, blah, VFX artists who worked on making the animation for them burrowing to the ground had to face such a challenge because you have to think about the textures of every single map that you're going oh. to have that interact with. You're gonna have to think about how how is this going to interact when they drop down from a slight edge onto a like a, a, a ledge maybe five centimeters below how are, how is it going to look when they drill into the payload how is it going to look when they fall right. off a tall ledge into empty space and they literally had to make um they, they had to think of every single situation and it's moments like this where locomotion is one of the biggest parts of overwatch that makes it feel so cool uh locomotion is just like how you get around the map like how how do you mm. and with someone like venture that is so important because the digging is so integral to the character and so part of what makes him feel so fluid is literally how it looks as you traverse the yeah map. and the fact that you can go from this ledge down here or vice versa with the the eruption um 
It's so cool. Like, remember in the trailer when they show that little bit on Nepal Sanctum where you're going off the ledge, you're booping the roadhog with it, but you're also appearing for a moment, right? Because you're drilling into empty space. You're like flying midair, suspended a bit, and that momentum carries through, and you kind of dive like like a little, um, like a fish into this next pond. It just makes the ground feel so liquid, and it yeah, adds yeah, to your yeah. fantasy so much. So the artists, the, the, the devs who worked on that, Freaking kudos. That's yeah, awesome. it's sick. Yeah, that's super awesome. I, l I love you bringing that perspective as well, because again, it's something that we often miss and we don't, we kind of take for granted because Overwatch always does these things so well. They just yeah. always deliver so well on, on like the visual aesthetics and the sound design mm. of like the heroes. So it's oh, it's nice to yeah. point out the hard work that, that, that goes in. Bones, do you have anything to add on that? Um... Can I just say the adventures design from like somebody who like likes drawing, who loves like stories, who loves characters and things like that. Just like just as a side, they look so cool. They just look yeah. like a scrunkly little just uh I I don't know. They when they announced the character and they were just like, hey, this is this is Venture. I'm like, that is a cool looking character. And I just ate that shit up. And I love that um, people in the community latched onto it. And I think that has lent itself to the popularity of them. They seem to, is, is it, do they feel like more popular than other characters? Like purely like, w were you more interested to play them because of like the character that they kind of had? Like, I don't know, like, cause, Personally, for me, I don't play a lot of tank, but when Malga came out, I was like, Malga, big, sexy man, unga bunga. You know what I mean? Like, nice. But I had no interest in playing as him. Do you kind of feel like maybe Venture is a likable character and that has kind of, like, garnered the interest around, like, playing them and learning them? I think so. I, th I think they yeah. seem yeah. to have gone down. I think the community has embraced them a lot quicker than... You know, like a character, yeah. I, I, like character like Iliari, for example. I actually really think her backstory is great, but mm. you know, I I haven't seen a ton of you know, Iliari eats sun pellets memes, right? Like I haven't. Yeah. You know, she hasn't quite taken to the same level of like affection. I think that the adventure seems mm. to have immediately garnered. So I think that does speak yeah. to just like as we spoke about earlier with the earnestness of the character and how immediately likable they seem to be. You know, and not every character, I guess, is gonna is gonna become like a fan favorite like that, right? Like everyone has their place. Some people really speak to some character, like some characters speak to some people, and some people, you know, are more niche. But yeah, yeah. I th I think I think Venture has gone down well, and they're not even out yet. They're not oh, even yeah. released yet. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, I think people have been excited about this one. Sam, free anything you want to add? Gotta sneeze. Uh, you gotta no. sneeze. Don't Stop sneeze. it. Just, just don't sneeze. No. Just don't do it. Don't Stop. Stop. Cut it out. You're making I'm a like, scene. Like, <laughs> now you don't have to thing. sneeze anymore. Well, <laughs> well, Sam, is biology. Uh, <laughs> um, yes. Thank you, Chad, for reminding me. Um, Ventures VA is the sweetest fucking bean. I love them so goddamn much. They actually yes. stream on Twitch. Uh, oh, they stream on Twitch. Yeah, they're super into wolves. It's adorable. Um, they're like neurospicy, yeah. queer, uh, person of color, like, and they're super outspoken about important issues. And oh my god, just incredibly endearing and energetic. And oh, I love them. Yes, <laughs> that is all. Yeah, I think I think they. It's, I think I remember reading that they're like a fan of Overwatch and they like like just watch just like Overwatch and watching content and playing the game. It's always I'm it's always better. nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's always nice when the VA is a bit more connected to the game. Not that they have to be, you know, it's ultimately a job, but it's always nice that they have like a connection to the community and yeah, maybe uh I think I think I saw them were they playing with Boger? I think at some point. Maybe we can get a free yeah. HUD duo we get a free HUD duo as well with the Venture VA, that'd be fun. So That would be please. so sick. I'd so like fun. to see that. I would love to see that. Yeah, Sam, any other thoughts? Now that you're not sneezing. That was a brutal 30 seconds. I won't lie. Um, it, it just had to come. I just couldn't. And then I, you know, yeah. Is that I'm, honestly, knock on wood, I usually get like a ton of bloody noses because I caught an elbow in the face of basketball. I broke my skull a bit. They set it back. It was fine. Um, but I usually get bloody noses and I don't have them this time of year, which is great. I've dodged. I'm knock on wood. Uh, no, I, yeah, I think, I think we nailed it. You know, I, I, it's, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited to play. <laughs> I'm going to be grinding. Like I'm, I'm, lo I'm locked in. I'm ready to go. Totally fair. I think I think that leads relevantly to maybe then thinking about the concluding thoughts of the Great Venture debate and talking about like the future and 
what we hope to see from you know the rest of well this season you know we won't we'll lose venture soon but venture will be back in season 10 so yeah we'll we'll I'll ask you the question as normal which is like what are you looking forward to for the rest of the season and then what are you looking forward to with season 10 and the launch of venture so uh free why don't you go first what are you looking forward to in the coming weeks and months I'm looking forward to fighting dumbasses on Twitter and in Twitch chats. <laughs> I'm looking forward to being excited about them uh, with with other people who are also on board because this is a really cool thing. I think it I think it's a really great thing and I hope we get the chance to just enjoy it, right? Like whenever we have a new hero that that magic of rediscovering Overwatch for the very first time and learning it and feeling like you're kind of lost in the sauce but you're figuring it out and you're having a blast, like that that's temporary, but it's one of the best parts of um big releases like this. So no, I just I I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. And in the meantime, I'm going to be gender. We're going to we're gonna make terrible uh, geology and archaeology jokes. I have a briefcase. <laughs> it's it's gonna be good. Yeah. You have a briefcase, but it's not brief, uh, and there'll probably be some some cursed uh, tier list coming featuring Venture as well. I'm sure. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Sam, how about you? What are, what are you kind of looking forward to? I I'm looking forward to pushing this character to limits that people don't i i hope people think venture's bad and i'm still gonna push super high rank on it or on them and be, it's gonna be like get cooked because remember people said it was somber too people were like oh somber's bad and like somber was not bad well there was one patch where somber was kind of bad I, I still made it work but I, I, that's what's so much fun is i, I love characters that 99.9% .9 of players can't play and I want to make a point by going out and playing them and dominating with them. And so that's what I'm really excited about. Maybe underdog, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's un yes, that's what it is. That's what it is. And I, I, I enjoy playing it. Um, I, I, I think the big thing that I'm looking forward to is kind of a meeting of the minds, if you will. Because I think this is one of the first times in gaming where you guys kind of talked about this. Where it's kind of like a big two tsunamis of, of culture just like kind of smacking and I, I you're talking to a kid who liked to watch like hurricanes like you know develop just to, the science of it all like, i always found it very interesting and to anybody out there like because i, I kind of get lumped in with a lot, of, a lot of the locker room talk because that's where i grew up right you know i grew up playing sports i grew up all that stuff so i got exposed to like a lot of stupid stupid shit and to anybody who kind of doubts that I, I i challenge you for this line of thinking right i would say at least in my personal experience, one of the reasons why I was able to like come into this game and be a top competitor and, and be good is because I challenged like how I think and I always introduce myself to new ideas and like a, 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 an approach of learning life in general. And if you want to push yourself as a person, I think that's a very essential life skill to learn to be, have an open mind and and take it all in and and let ideas kind of clash internally because i think human beings are vessels to the ideas around them which is like like human beings can always change but ideas by their definition technically can't change because then they would be a different idea i get does that make that might not make any sense um but I, i'm i'm excited to see and just kind of study in my own mind like how things develop from here and how people can learn because i i always want to learn i'm addicted to learning i am addicted to learning wow i didn't think of it like that um and it's just gonna it's gonna be fun to see, and I want to be a part of that that wave pushing the upper limits, and I'm gonna dominate on this character, so it's gonna be a good time, and I'm gonna be talking some trash to people saying that they're bad because I'm gonna I, I'm underdog, but we're good, we're good. I mean, I mean, it's always so much more fun playing a character who isn't like this is the meta character. Like, I mean, I, yeah. I know some people enjoy that, but like realistically, who's having fun when it's like. Yes, I'm like the 80 other people who climb to GM on the character that is like just the strongest character right now. You know, like, good job, well done. It's always much more fun when it's like, this is a really tough character to get value out of, and I still did it. Like That, that, that yeah. to me, speaks to competitive gaming, if you're, if you're going to take it seriously. Um, Bones, how about you? What are you looking forward to for the coming weeks in the next season? Um, The next season in the coming weeks... I'm looking forward to people experiencing Overwatch 2 in a more positive light. Um, whatever form that might take for them, it might be 
the queer community being excited to play the game again because there's some representation for the non-binary trans folks out there, whether it's the competitive scene who are excited for a new hero that's going to like shake it up and for them to be like really interested and engaged again. Um, I'm really excited from like a fan perspective um, for the art and like the community side of things. Like I'm really excited for people to, um, you know, for Ventura specifically, um, like for people to like write their little fanfics and like draw their pictures. And I'm just like, I'm excited for people to be excited again. And I sincerely hope that this is a point where we start looking at the game or, you know, some people look at the game in a positive light again. Um, I'm really hopeful. And I think that as a community, um, if we're all out there and we're putting out some positive things, I know that we spoke about um, how uh, negative stuff gets clicks, but I just hope that, um, you know, we take away from this. It's just like, be positive about things and put good things out there. Um, and hopefully it helps to shape the overall experience that people have uh, within this community. Um, I'm also really excited for Sam to shit on people as uh, Venture and get like, just grind to the top and be number one and be like, yep, he did it. <laughs> I'll, just Let's for go. you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it personal now. All right, we're gonna, we're you gonna, should. We're gonna do it. We're gonna, and, and then we do yeah. shoes. Yeah, it's personal. It's personal. And then we drink okay. out of some shoes. And should we, you know what? I'll tell you what. If I, if I end up the highest ranked venture main on ladder, I will do a shoey. Oh, sad. I love it. And just to spy SVB. Let's go. <laughs> I will not be donating to that subathon. <laughs> I will not be subbing, um, to that one. Oh, do not want that goal. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm. I'm looking forward to the this the yeah the continued reception of the community. Like obviously there'll be there'll be weirdos and idiots, but you know there's people who still haven't let go of, of Cassidy. So like that that's inevitable. Yeah. Like that will that will happen. But I think by and large it it is been really fun seeing so many people write their like little fan fiction and fan art adventure. Yeah. I hope it, it I hope it does indicate some sort of more consistent lore drops because yeah again I think there was like a there was like a. Obviously, the venture is like a part of the, what was the the wayfinders like this archaeological society, and I think like a lot of the lore people were really interested that this indicates that maybe they're gonna move move along with the lore because you know again ventures like trailer they're in Petra and they're like digging in for some stuff and then they find Anubis at the end right yeah so there's like a lot of these like Wait, a lot of these really? hints that, yeah there's yeah. Like a lot of these hints that like there's something coming a new with map the lore tease. <laughs> yeah, that's true and there map. was a new map tease yeah. as well so I I I just... it's because you were already Bestie. grinding you saw halfway you were like all right i want to play you're like in the I training that's range <laughs> that's it i gotta go eat rocks i gotta go so i i hope that there'll be some like you know interesting i i just think i i always i harp about this every time in the podcast so I, i'm sure any like developers listening are tired but I'm always looking forward to doing more with the lore. I'm always looking forward to Overwatch doing more with the story because as we've all yep. discussed and Bones confirmed, it's like the characters draw in so many people and the yeah. characters have so much, such a magic for the wider gaming sphere that they still hold this place even when the game isn't always at its most popular. So I, I look forward to that element. And of course, I think it'll be really fun. I, 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 would, I look forward to a time when Venture queue times aren't so high so I can actually grind the hero a bit more as well. Because I haven't really got the chance to play them too much, so and I I just I just hate queue times. I never like queuing like and sitting in queue time, so I just flex. Yeah. Um, <laughs> SVB, so, one last thing I got. Mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you, I'll let you finish. You're, you're gonna get no, no, that was yeah. basically what I was gonna say. I look forward to lore, mm -hmm. venture, and fun, and seeing what people do with them, and then what else, whatever else the devs have got cooking for for season ten and the rest of this season. Go ahead, Sam. Some Samito bingo card viewers are gonna be real disappointed today. This is true. This is true. <laughs> I, 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 that's I, the I, first I, one in four years. I think. I think that's the first one in four years where we have not hit bingo. That's so. true. Well, it's part. It's partly also because you know Flats and Free Dawn are here to antagonize you and into into like going into. <laughs> that's some, right. That's so true. Into like going into some section of that, but that's yeah, so I mean. True. There's a, there's there's been a lot of fire in the in the trees in the forest, but you know we're not gonna we're gonna ignore it for now. Like yeah, yeah. like like politicians in in policy making, we're gonna ignore the flaming planet and we're gonna just plow on regardless. And we're gonna Woo! make good video games because video games bring people together. Well, I think that's the Overwatch slogan now, isn't it? Within the team, it's like let's make a great game. It's kind of what they how they like end meetings. I think they've been ending dev blogs with that. So. Uh, so, you know, we can we can we can borrow that a little bit. We we hope that Overwatch will yeah. will be a great game, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys will have fun. Thank you to 
Samito, Bones, and Freya for joining me and giving me so much of their time. Please show them some love uh, and support whatever ventures they may embark upon. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was not deliberate. I was just using the word now. Like, Wait uh -huh. a minute. This is a uh -huh. pun here. I dig it. Um, Don't worry. I dig it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> it was a really groundbreaking sentence. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sam, you're going to have to come up with something now. I get out punned. I'm supposed to be in my prime dad form right now. I'm just not. Jeez, I lose. All right, yeah, you guys, you guys win. No worries, no worries. Well, thank you very much, guys. I hope you guys have a, a great rest of your day. But for now, this is all from us. Thank you guys for listening. Peace out.